Hello and welcome to the Golden Trail World Series. The best trail running show is back and we are buzzing to bring you all of the action from today's race. Your commentators for today are myself, Jess Rogers, and the wonderful trail running expert, David Hellard. It's the fourth stage of the series and we are in Switzerland. The world's best trail runners will participate in one of the oldest trail races in the world. Born in 1973, this race, Sierra Zanau, is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year and it's going to be a cracker. Your commentators for today are excited, aren't we, David? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the race that we've been waiting for. Um, the build-up to Sierra Zanau, it's the oldest trail race in Europe. And the big question today is whether Nienka can break the record and Remy Benet can finish the list he's had on his wall since he's been a child, the, his, his goals in life. Sierra Zanau is his dream. He's never won it. He's Swiss. Can he do it? That's the big question of today. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see on the screen, we've, we've got a bit of a cloudy start. We thought it was going to be bright sunshine, but it's actually um, it's about 24 degrees. And so I think the runners, we have amateurs who started super early this morning. Um, our professionals will be getting underway in about, about 10, 14 minutes. I think it's at 5-2, isn't it? So, yeah, it's all looking great. And we can't wait uh, for what this race has in store. Let's have a look at the course. The organisers, to celebrate this event, the organisers have invited 57 former winners of the, the, the event in previous years, who together, they represent a whopping 97 victories. And in terms of most wins, it's nine for the infamous Kilian Journey from Spain and four for the wonderful Anna Pitch Rover. And the record time for the men's event is two hours, 25 minutes and 35 seconds. And that is held by Kilian himself. And we might be having him in the commentary box later. And then the, the female record is two hours, 49 minutes, 20 seconds by Maud Mathis. But David, should we look at the course? Yeah, and, and we, we talk about how Sierras are now is where road runners can meet trail runners. And you'll see why here. Um, but first, we get the, this is where Sierras are now is in the series. It's 31 kilometers with 2,200 meters of elevation, but only 1,100 meters of descent. So this is a race for the climbers. They come into Chandelin and they've already climbed over a thousand meters super fast. But across the top here, you can see this is where the road runners can start to actually eat in to the climbers. And there's a very short, sharp descent at the end. So it's really a race of three different sections that they're going to be undertaking today. So you can see the steepness of these climbs and it's currently under cloud coverage, which is very important for quite a few other athletes. It's going to be very hot when they come out at Chandelin and they start to stride out their pace. We've seen in the past a lot of the, the runners who've been training at altitude where it's not quite as hot as here in Zanau aren't used to this intensity. So they'll come out of the, um, the cloud coverage you can see here under the trees and suddenly hit that huge temperature. Yeah, so this is the fourth race of the Golden Trail World Series. And, and the first one was back in May in Zagama. And then we moved on to Mont Blanc in June. And then we had Dolly Myths. Uh, just, just, you're going to talk us through it. That was just last month. This is the fourth. We then go to America. And then it's Italy for the finale in October. So we're going to explain the full details of the points and how the season works. But your, your top three races before the finals, coin for count for the points. Most importantly here though today is that Sophia Lockley, Daniela Omus are both running as is Sylvia Nordska. So we'd expect Sophia to be top three uh, in the field and that potentially could put her to the top of the standings overall. Caitlin Fielder isn't here today even though she leads. It's a similar, similar story in the men where um, the because Sierra's now is such a fast race we, we're not expecting to see our technical trail runners come here. They know they're not going to be able to compete with some of our, our Kenyan runners, some of our Eritrean runners. And so people like Petru, 
people like Manu uh, Marias, who uh, was joint leading the series, won't be racing today because he knows that it's just not technical enough for him. Yeah, we can see him at the top there of the overall men's ranking, but he, he's, he's not racing here today, is he? So we, we might see some other people overtake some others in these overall rankings, depending on how today goes. Absolutely. And if we look at the names here, the 10 names we've got in our season so far, a lot of these runners won't be in these places at the yeah. end of the season. It's just because they've raced three races. But Looking at the people on offer today, though, El Hassin and Remy are both racing. And potentially, they, either one of those could do well today. And so we'd expect at the end of, um, at the end of this race to either have Remy or El Hassin um, leading the series. There's no one else in our top 10 that we expect to be um, coming through. But there will be runners because you can score 200 points for a win. So people outside our top 10 will be coming back into the overall standings before we head to America. I think it's important to note because we mentioned him at the beginning that Killian Journey was going to be racing today, but he's not. He, he's injured, so therefore he's, he's not in that mix. Um, but we, we do expect him to be in the commentary box with us later to give his thoughts on, on, on the course, on the event, and give a bit of commentary to the other male runners. But it's set to be, a, it's a really stacked field, isn't it, David? Yeah, it's, and, and one of the big differences between Sierras and now and the races we've had so far is that we, we've already mentioned that road runners come in, but actually there's a lot of mountain runners as well who tend to be faster runners that aren't as skilled technically, but have very fast 10K marathon times. And so there will be quite a few new names um, in the series today. Some of them will be then joining us for the rest of the season as well. But we often find with this race, you can see everyone starting at the beginning here. Um, there are some names that we don't even know that are coming. And we've been told of some runners today that aren't even numbers on our list yet. <laughs> we know they're in there. We, we've got our spies. We've got the coaches telling, uh, telling us who's coming. And so we will see massive battles between runners who aren't used to racing each other as well. And, and that upsets their, their flow. And yeah, you can see this is the start line here in Sierra. And Sierra, it's such a sunny, wonderful place. That's just 300 days of sunshine. But yeah, you can see uh, this is footage from, from yeah, by the yeah, start the line. Camera. So you can yeah. see Eli Hemming here uh, next to Robbie Simpson. With You can see Robbie Simpson's got the neckerchief. He knows it's going to be hot. He's got the experience. But this is our predicted top 10 of the people we know on here. Um, Judith sadly pulled out last night. She's having stomach issues. She's come second here before. But um, the people really thought those top five, I think, are probably going to be a group ahead of everyone else. The men's is far more open. And you can see um, we've got uh, Cesari. It's, it's not even in the top five predictions. He's come third here. Robbie's come second here four times in a row. And he's not even in our top four predictions. That's how stacked this field is. And there will be other names that we've never heard of who will be making an appearance without doubt. Yeah, and I mean, they all looked, I mean, they looked pretty happy to me. They looked pretty excited. We were with, uh, we were with the athletes yesterday and it was a really good vibe, wasn't it? I mean, you can see Eli Hemming there. He, he looks cool, doesn't he? He looks, he looks calm. He looks like he was in great spirits yesterday. I think lots of people are excited about this race. Yeah, and, and you can see this is Patrick to the right of our screens. He came in last year as the favourite. He's potentially the favourite today as well. He is the, um, the sky running, so he is the VK world champion. He's the fastest climber in the world over short distances. Remy is known as the fastest climber over longer distances. So this is the first time we're having a head-to-head to -head yeah. see who actually is going to be crowned best climber on earth. It's going to be good. I mean, in the press conference yesterday, uh, Patrick was, was kind of making no no small means about so he thought he might do quite a good job. And he was Remy's biggest challenger here. But Nieke, you can just see her. You can see with the cap on backwards, the white cap there in the middle of the shot she looks focused she wants this one she hasn't she hasn't been able to participate in the last couple of races injury and she is the reigning golden trail world series champion she's also an exceptional marathon road runner for the for the netherlands team wants to compete in the olympics next year i mean look you can see the focus but also she was really calm and really chilled yesterday um, she was asked if you know if the, the pressure gets to her but she actually said that she sees it as motivation and i'm really excited to see her run today her and sophia and and ali mclaughlin I, oh it's gonna be good and, and if we look at this start you're probably thinking this looks like one of the most <laughs> unattractive race starts for trail running on earth david the, um, <laughs> we, you know we say we say what we see we're honest with with our views and 
th that's because Sierra's are now is almost unique in that in the 50 years, uh, nearly every single year is exactly the same course. And so when they changed the roads, they still kept the same course. So it means that we know the times every year and people will be running with a time in mind because you get your top 10 paces that get you prizes from the Golden Trail. But actually, if you come under certain paces, you get money as well. Mm, because, um, yeah. every, you can test yourself against every year. So we even saw runners like Thomas Roach on the left there, who uh, he's, he's, come, he's come second in the world champs at a, um, a marathon distance. He's not even in our top 10. That is the level of field. Mm. Um, you can see Remy Body there. He's got the Red Bull cap on and he's got his sunglasses on. He just looks, he's, you know, sitting back in the second row, just, you know, biding his time. What, what you did tell me, David, because you are the expert in, in trail running here. I'm, I'm a bit more of a newbie. I'm the, I'm the voice of the people watching. And so it's quite a narrow start, this one, isn't it? The route. So you don't want to get stuck behind people. And this is one of the challenges for the women. In, in, in previous years, we've had the women start first. Um, they're all in a mass start. And... There is a small little sprint before they hit single track trail. Mm. And so you can get stuck in but behind groups of runners. And one of the challenges for the females is how hard do you go out in this first bit of running? Because you don't want to really get your adrenaline up and get your speed and your pace going too fast. But if you're slow, you could get stuck behind a lot of males. And so for someone like Nienke, where we don't ex necessarily expect her to be climbing the fast against uh, runners like Filaris Kisang from Kenya and, and Ali Mack, who showed in our finals last year. She led out day one and day five ahead of Nienka. And so one of the challenges is whether do you commit early knowing that it gives you a good position for this climb or do you sit back and hope that you can reel people in across the top? And that will really be the tail of the first half of this race. But um, we're gonna be finding out the start shortly. It's gonna be incredible. Those shots there were just showing the beauty of Sierra. As I said earlier, it is named like the Sunshine City as well. And gosh, since we've been here, it's been sunny, hasn't it, David? But a little bit of cloud cover now as these as these runners are just about to go. Um, how do you think they're feeling? I mean, certainly a lot of nerves. Maybe not from this man, Philemon. Here we can see on the left of our screen, he's been running the he's been winning the world in the yellow. Yeah, he's, he's been winning the mounted running championships. He's very fast across the top on the downhills, and he is confident coming into this. Right. So uh, you'll be able to sell from the body language shortly who's feeling good today. Now, with the, the, uh, with the women, we've, uh, we've got a lot of fast runners who um, actually haven't even made our top 10. We've been sending our spies out to try and figure out who's out there. Now, jo Joyce Nigiru, she was the favorite last year, and she is on our list of runners. She, um, she's number 313. And also we have uh, Mercy Tuitok, who is the Luxembourg Marathon champion, has been running some very fast times this year. So both of those people will be in and amongst it. And if you're, if you're Ninka, if, yes. um, if you're Ali and Sophia, you're not expected to see them. And it, and it could really upset their race plans when suddenly someone they don't know is running fast ahead of them. And we are about to get off. And the ribbon is down. And 
Race four of the Golden Trail World Series is away here in Sierra Zanau. And gosh, the atmosphere, you can just feel it in the town. Everyone is excited for this one. It's the 50th anniversary and it is set to be a right treat. And off they go. It is quite narrow even to begin with, isn't it? And as they go through the forest, it gets even narrower. Yeah, and we're, we're going to set your expectations on what we're hoping to see in terms of the, the cameras because... Bikes can't get up this, is this, this route. It's too steep to climb. And so we have camera runners filming them. They carry three kilogram backpacks. And we hope we should be able to see the men and the women throughout this climb. But in previous years, it has been quite hard to get footage of it. So um, that's just to set your expectations. You can see out the front, there is someone there running um, on the side. Uh, that could be one of our camera runners just taking it in. But um, th this, is the, this is where they're trying to set their pace to, to they've had a good warm up by now and they'll be looking around to see who's there. Can I, can I ask you about that then, David? Right, you're going to educate me about trail running throughout this. Um, their warm up, you talk about these elite runners, what are they going to do for their warm up before they get to that start line? So the main thing they're doing their warm up is they'll do a series of uh, kind of short sprints. They're called strides by a lot of people where they just try and engage their muscles. They'll, they'll try and run in a style that they feel is a, a fluid motion just to get the, the muscles engaged and all working together. And because they do short strides, it means they don't tire themselves out too much. It shouldn't actually affect their glycogen stores and their, their energy systems for this race. But you could, also, you could already see they're climbing already. Mm, and that, that's Remy Bonnet in second place, isn't it? With his white cap on, his Red Bull cap on and his sunglasses. Who's that in first, I, do you think? I, it looks like Patrick from behind. Okay. And so it, there's... The, the best way to tell the runners is um, we'll be able to, to pick out quite a few of them. Run together are the runners in yellow, and they've come with a large number of fast runners. And, and are they all from Kenya, all the run together runners? Run together from Kenya, but significantly for this race, they've actually been training in Austria. So. Oh, OK. So that's going to help them. So they've been in a similar, yes, they've been in a similar um, altitude, similar scenery, similar routes that you find here in Switzerland. And So the run together, the Kenyan athletes are, are the ones in yellow, aren't they? You can see a lot of them at the front of the pack there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and they've also got a lot of, of good female runners. Now, the, the altitude of this race, we're starting at 500 metres, which if you were there, you wouldn't notice this at all. But it climbs up to just under two and a half thousand meters and anything over above kind of 1400 meters and you will start to notice it they've been training um sierra is, is surprisingly sunny for its its height and and it has high temperatures given the height that it is whereas in austria they've actually been training at five degrees oh, and that's so cold yeah, yeah. And, and and we we think of kenya africa hot but actually where people train in places like e10 it's, it's more like British weather. It can be where it, it, it's not particularly sunny. And so we are expecting them to potentially struggle towards the end of this race where it's, it's going to be between 25 and 20, 28 degrees, yeah. 29 degrees. And so this could be a factor. So the, to the total race length there is 31 kilometres. And I just want to talk a bit about the, the Golden Trail World Series in general. There's, there's six races, isn't there? And they are all, I suppose, in, in some people's regards, they're a shorter form of trail race. They're not ultras. You know, they are between 20 and, and 43 kilometres. Am I right, David? And, and it's all about, um, you know, the rise of these length races and the athletes that, that run them is just, it's, it's just blowing up right now. It's super exciting. The races are more interesting interesting because they're shorter there's more drama going on there's really interesting courses um tell me a bit about why why the races are this length and why these ones are chosen for the golden trail series and, and the whole ethos behind the golden trail was, was partly to to bring together the the most prestigious the the highest level competition trail races in the world but also to create a product that's great for television as well yes, so yep. ultra running is is incredible to see how uh, how successful you know how, how much people can achieve at those distances but when it comes to technical running this is our leader ah interesting we we've been tipped off that mm. um hendrik uh, pfeiffer would, he's a 210 marathon runner from germany so he's almost he's right in some ways to be ahead this will be easy for him the challenge will be how long he can keep this up for because as he starts to get into the steeper climbs, you'll see he's still running fluidly here. I think this is Patrick on his yeah. shoulder. Yeah, th th this is um, oh, this the is German. Philemon on his shoulder, actually. Philemon um, Umbogo, who um, 
not not actually the best climate of him and Patrick, but uh, but you can see already their body language is changing slightly. They're they're starting to be a little bit more hunched, and we we expect Hendrik will be amongst this group for the first Columbia tour too. But I suspect he'll really start to struggle. Yeah, and 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 Hen Hendrik is the German marathon champion. He he was the Olympic participant in the marathon in 2021 in Tokyo, and yeah. He, we, we thought he might be at the top of this, but he's not that familiar in the, in the Golden Trail kind of top 10, is he, or anything like that? And, and that's why people love this race, because you will get people like Hendrik just turning up thinking, well, I'm way... F they'll look at, on paper at the, the speeds of the trail runners' times who don't train for marathons, don't run marathons, and think, surely I can meet these people. Yeah. And um, this is partly why we love it, because Hendrik is going to take a beating today. <laughs> he doesn't realise that yet. And, and actually, one of the challenges is, because there's so much climbing, by the time you get to the point where Hendrik should be able to take advantage of his speed, the likelihood is that his legs are going to be toast and absolutely trash from this climb. Interesting. So you can see at the top left of your screen, it says the head of the race. Obviously, this is the pack that are, that are leading at the moment. And underneath that, it says 29.6 kilometers. That means how long is left to go of the race. So we're only, you know, a kilometer and a bit in right now. Um, but we're going really steep. Like even for someone who's not particular, not doesn't know that much about trail running, they can see this is this is hard. This is steep, David. And, and you can you can see they're already single file as well. You know, you can overtake here but it, it just becomes problematic to do so. And this will be critical in the women's race. We, we do have camera, camera runners throughout the field, so we will be cutting forward and back between them. Mm. And there are also several um, timing chip markers throughout this race where we'll be able to actually give you the splits of the top 10. And as we said, because it is the same race every year, we will be able to tell you how they're doing against the record time and against previous years. I think the big, the big question in this is Remy is coming in as joint favourite, but realistically, Remy has only ever run a 2.34 on this race course. He's never done well at Sierras and Al because he's always started at the front. He knows he's the best climber. He's run with Killian the last two years and with Patrick last year, and it's, it's taken too much out of him. So the big question is, has his last year where he's stepped up a gear, he's really been focusing on his downhill speed and his flat speed as well. Will he be able, is that going to be enough to improve his race time? By, he'll need, we think, around five minutes improvement to seven minutes improvement to win today. At, at, at a bare minimum. It is. Um, it has been the one that's kind of escaped him, hasn't it? This, and as he is Swiss and we are in Switzerland, he really wants this one. I mean, you can just get a sense of the amazing views you've got on the right-hand side there. Like, it really is a sensational setting. And just that you, you can see our, one of our uh, camera runners there. Just to give you a bit more context on these amazing live camera uh, runners is that basically that the slope is too steep to have um, to have any motorcycles there, which is what you usually get in traditional road races or, or, or bike races. Um, and yeah, they run with, with the transmitter. They, 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 they do a bit of a relay. There's mm. multiple runners on there. And it's just an amazing way that this Golden Trail World Series is filmed. It kind of gives us access that you've never had before to this type of thing. And it's just fab. You get up close and personal just like this and, now. And this is like uh, Robert uh, Pekimoy, who um, he, he's come top five in Golden Trail numerous times in the past. He's let this group go, which is quite significant. He is a very good climber. He attacked Remy in uh, Zagama, the first race of the season. He attacked him on the uphill, so he's got that ability. And his, um, his coach, Octavia, said that he's, he is in very good form for this race, but we do know that he's had Achilles problems leading into it. So this could actually be a good move for him. One of the significant things about previous editions of these races is how much people have managed to catch up the front of the race. We're going to be talking about Andrew uh, Blanis, who won last year at Beauregard, which is 15% into the race, kind of around 4k up. He was in 21st position and he still managed to win this race. So this gives wow. you a bit of an expectation of how much you can catch up across the top. And uh, Eli Hemming as well, you can see they've split the pack into two uh, two fields already. Eli came second in Mont Blanc. He's a very fast triathlete who's transitioning into trail. And so they, they clearly are making decisions to, to save themselves to attack later on in the race.
Yeah, and th we, we kind of said at the beginning, David, this, this race is split into three sections, isn't it? We're currently on, on section number one. This is Eli Hemming here. And this is about seven kilometres of steep incline, mm. right? Super steep. And you, you'll see here as well, it's, um, it, it's single track, which means you, you, you generally, generally tend to tuck in behind the person in front of you and run their pace. But significantly, it's, it's covered in trees and you can see there isn't heat here. And one of the... The big challenges for our runners is their first nutrition points. They can pick up water repeatedly through the race, but it's in Chandelin, which is around halfway. And that is only 12, 13 kilometers in. So this is um, Roberto, who came second in the Dolomis run. He's also a very, very good climber as well. So it, it gives you, it, it tells you that Remy and Patrick are, are really battling each other and, and Philemon as well, and potentially going um, too fast at this stage, given how the, the pedigree of the climbers behind them. Do you think? Well, we just saw um, a, a, the screen grab, the graphic of Eli Hemming, and, and he was in 11th place. Uh, and so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of runners ahead of him at the moment, isn't there? And there's a few runners in there that we, we don't know either. I, I did catch number 153 was on the start line, um, who was someone I hadn't heard of before. And, and also number 74, someone called Mekonen um, Tefera from Ethiopia. So we're going to do some research into him. It's classic Golden Trail, classic Sierras an hour. Someone will turn up that we, um, we've not been tipped off to. They can come in with very fast marathon times and, and potentially challenge here, here as well. Now we're talking about the Golden Trail and how the, the series is set up. There are six races and a final. And the intent of it is really to test runners across distances from half marathon to marathon distance to find who are the best over technical trails, faster trails, and it, it mixes that speed um, with technical skills that you don't see in ultras. And, and you will see at the end of the course how steep some of this downhill is. And last year we had a lot of runners falling who were distracted, who were just tired. And so um, skill does come into this as well. Absolutely. And I think we just, we had a flash up recently about how fast these runners were going. They were going at about 11 kilometers per hour. Now, that doesn't sound that fast, I say, for a professional runner, because that's about that's about 530 pace for a kilometer. But the incline was was so steep, wasn't it? So that gives yeah. you a flavor. And it, it's so hard to relate. Um, <laughs> running times to to people at home but to give you a sense i mean a 210 marathon that's that's the pace of, of some of the runners here and actually we're going to be talking about rennie the v, the vk um the vk 10k it's something that we'll chat to killian later that he created for his training for this race you run a vertical kilometer which is climbing a thousand meters in less than five kilometers and then you run a, K a 10k time David, that sounds awful. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's absolutely brutal. We can see um, we have here, um, we have uh, Fre Francesco Pupi, who has come fourth here. Um, he clearly is pacing well. He's, he came second in the, the World Championships last year in Thailand. So this is a pedigree we've got on offer here. But significantly for this year, Remy's time was two minutes faster when he did his 10K. He did a 28-minute 10K, having already, sorry, in fact, I've checked my notes. He's a 29-minute 10K, having already run a vertical kilometre prior to it, back-to-back -back during that session. It was also faster than Killian's time when Killian came here and broke the record. So one of the reasons why we're going to be talking about Remy as a favourite, even though he's, he's really not had great success here, is because of that step change in his training in the past year. Yeah, and he he did seem pretty confident uh, at the at the um, at the press conference yesterday. In fact, he said if he wins, he's going to celebrate. If he doesn't win, he's going to come back next year and do it again. So he's he's very focused. He seemed very calm. Um, it was a, it was really good to see him like that. Yeah, absolutely. And and the great thing is that Patrick is also very very confident. Last year, um, Patrick was coming in here as as the favourite with Killian. And prior to the race, there were a lot of races in, in mountain running that he'd been taking part in. Last week, for, for example, is Theon Dixon, which we'll be, we'll be mentioning as a reference to other runners throughout the course of this, uh, this program. But that was last weekend. And Patrick has decided not to do as many races building up to this so that he can just focus on Sierra's and now because he knows he's a great climber, but he needs to, like Remy, increase increase his flat speed and also get better at running down. And so both of them are coming in 
very, very confident of their abilities. And I think we're seeing that in the pace they're coming through. Yeah, and I just want to get across how steep this is to the people at home. I mean, you can see some of these runners, they're already kind of walking up with that, their hands on their knees and it's a way to conserve energy but still go about as fast as, as, a, as a jog, isn't it? But just look at that incline. It's wild how steep this is straight off. I tell you what, yep. this one wouldn't be for me, David. I don't think it's for the faint-hearted, this one, is it? And I mean, I went out running uh, yesterday and the day before and I was struggling to, ble to breathe because of the altitude and it was nowhere near as steep as this. So this looks like Philemon is leading out, which... Yeah. Is Number a surprise. 14, yep. Um, you've got Redi Remy and Patrick behind, but the fact that Philemon is, is at the front is... I would be nervous if I was Patrick and Remy because Philemon, he is... He's the fastest of these three on paper across the top. He's a better descender than Patrick. And so I was coming into today expecting for Remy and Patrick to be at the top together and for Philemon to be the person chasing them down. If Philemon can be at the top ahead of them, Everything changes, so and because because his flat pace and his and his descending is is superior to to Remy and Patrick's, and, and Remy's in the white there, and Patrick is number ten. He's faster than Patrick. I don't know about Remy anymore because okay. Remy has improved so much, and and I would say Remy's downhill is the best in the top ten, um, other than El Hussein, who was the person we may be talking about later in this race if he's paced it properly. But we're with the women. This looks like Fillerice from her running style. Uh, this is Fillerice oh, yep. Kisang. On the left, yep, that's group one of the, yeah, well, group one of the overall race because this race did start with men and women together uh, at the Marathon de Mont Blanc. We actually had a separate start for men and women, but this, they're all starting together. Oh yeah, she's got a very unique, unique style going up there, hasn't she? She does, and, and this is just how she runs. We saw this in the finals um, in Madeira. She has a very unique running style, but um, I mean, this must be very frustrating to her to have so many people in amongst you. You want to be able to choose where you're putting your foot to run at your own pace. But you can see the number of people ahead of her. This could actually be benefiting her because there's going to be even more people behind her. And so Ali Max, Sophia Lockley and Nienka could be getting trapped as well. Fillerice comes into this as last year she came second. She did a very, very good performance. She's known more for her climbing as well. She came second in the VK in the World Championships only a few months ago. So we thought she'd be up here. We did wonder whether Ali Mack might be going out fast with mm. her. But Ali was saying that she's aware that she often goes out too quick. And so she needs to hold back. So, um, but, but it looks like a, a significant lead for Fillerice at this stage in the race because they're only... 15, 16, 17 minutes in, which um, for me is exciting because we know Nienk is the fastest. She's got a 2.22 marathon time. She's going to be chasing it down. And uh, this is great because it means Phyllis, it, she's putting herself in a good position of potentially winning this thing. You could see a little stumble there from Patrick in third, but, but the three of the oh, we're back with the women, maybe, I think. We will see. Oh, it floating around. And th I'm not. I do not know who this is. Actually, three five three. We're going to have a quick check who this is because this is not someone we'd expect to see here at this stage of the race. But because it is a race of three different sections, yeah, you can have people. And it. This is Monica Floria from uh, from Romania. Ah, yes, she's. I mean, she is a very good trail runner. We're going to get some stats on her as well, and uh, she's got a great pedigree. So, um. What we will research now, though, is whether we will also expect to see her at the end because there have been some fantastic trail runners out of Romania recently. So, um, but this is the first time we've seen her properly in Golden Trail and, and in Sierras and out. But, but back with the men, there's three of them there looking. You can see that the, the gradient has softened slightly. The big time is when they're going to be coming through Beauregard. This is our first aid station and um, the... The time for the record was 20.34 by Killian in 2019. So um, we'd expect these three to potentially be up with Killian. Um, they've got the ability to, but they, but they may be pacing slightly differently. So this is something for us to check. We also know that in third is Nienke, and we did expect her to obviously be in that, in that kind of top three, if not in, in top one position. So that's great to hear. And we will be flicking between the men and women's races and footage as the race progresses.
and the Val d'Arnivia is steeped in heritage and tradition. The history of Glacier One is the perfect example. It dates back to 1886 and visitors are invited to also discover how rye bread is baked in a traditional oven. And if you take a walk, you'll be sure to spot a herd of the Aaron's cattle. These cows are known for their fighting spirit, for defending their place in the hierarchy, but are very affectionate with people. And during the summer, the herds graze in the valley's high mountain pastures on the plentiful, lush grass. And these optimal conditions means they produce full flavored cheeses with character. And raclette is a really popular tradition from the valley region that runners also enjoy and here we are back and this this is joyce who wasn't in our top 10 who we didn't actually know was going to be appearing here but joyce nigiri from uh, milamani runners um she was she was one of the favorites last year she comes back she's she is a good climber as you can see but she is known for her speed as well and so we'd expect her to be um tracking down philemon uh, philaris across the top. Now, we've just done a, li a little bit more research. Uh, Madalena Floria was the, the Romanian in, in second or third place, and she, she does have a good pedigree. She came fourth in the World Championships, the kind of classic up and down distance, 11K, 8K. So she's very good at shorter distances. Um, we, our question for her would be whether she, like 33K is quite a long distance. Yeah, do we expect her to probably do well in this first 7K to 10K, then, and then drop off a little bit? Absolutely, well, potentially, but the, the great thing about, about this race is it, it gives people an opportunity to, to step up a distance and to see how they do. And we spoke about Andrew Blanis last year, and his performance was, was something no one expected because he specializes in the 3,000 meter steeplechase. Right. So, I mean, this is a bit different from the 3,000 meter steeplechase. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so to go from that, and he, he's not here this year because he's training for the Olympics, and uh, I think he's got a, a good chance of qualifying for that. And so to see him. Um, step up this distance and do so well just shows you that that it is possible and so um we're hoping that madalina you know will be well, able to, to hold up with this sophia luckily there i believe very familiar running style slightly head down slightly bent over but always very like poised and kind of flowy i see as sophia absolutely and she is a very good climber she's a nordic skier olympic nordic skier she won Mont Blanc Marathon by a huge amount uh, two races ago when we were when we were on Eurosport. The question for her, we, we, we weren't quite sure how to rank that against someone like Nienka um, and someone like Joyce. And um, but in in the Dolomites, we've we've found out since she came second there. It was a great performance. We knew she'd struggle a bit at the altitude. She actually had COVID while she was there. No so way. Come second with COVID. Gosh, um, if you can come second with COVID, you can do anything, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. So she's she's quite nervous coming in today. She said in the press conference yesterday that this is the first like run run race she's done because the others are more climbing are more technical, whereas this is where the true speed comes in and we're yet to really know what her true speed is like against someone like Nienke and, and Ali Mack but um, the fact she's climbing well here is is a great sign for her because she's been behind Nienke and she's behind Ali when we're in Flagstaff um, in the finals in Madeira she was never ahead of them on the climbs so um, you know, this is this is a, a good sign that she's, yeah. she's you know she's feeling good. She um she's also a bit younger, isn't she, than some of the other about twenty two. And uh, the other athletes we, we've been talking about Nienke, I think she's twenty nine um, around that. And so you know, with with this oh, and at the moment on the screen you can see the finish line because it's not just elite runners who are running this. We're going to be obviously following the elite race for the Golden Trail World Series, but we're, there's six thousand five hundred participants that take part in Sierra's now, and those places sell out in a matter of like minutes i think it's such a highly sought after race to to get into that they've been going since 4 45 this morning 4 45 a.m that is an early start isn't it david yeah and, and we will see them overtaking runners throughout the race because one of the challenges with the course is trying to get everyone to the start they have buses that ship people out there and so our runners would have been on those buses in the heat traveling to the start already and and it's it's quite nice though throughout the race and we're we're seeing um, number 13 here, who is another runner we weren't necessarily expecting to be to be competing so well at this stage. That is um, Simon Shappy from uh, from On Trail, Switzerland. So um, another runner we're going to look into and see whether we expect to see them near the end of the race in this position. But yeah. um, 
the, the good thing about having runners ahead of you, it can be frustrating if you get trapped, which is why they do the smaller groups so that our runners here can run freely because there are waves of runners ahead of them. But it means there's always someone to hunt in the distance. And that really helps with the mental battle if you're starting to tire to actually focus on someone and, and keep your pace up. And I just want to talk about some, uh, we're going to see some, um, some regular runners, some amateur runners coming through that finish line. And, and the time on that was five hours 30. And, and David, just to give us some context, like uh, say uh, a, a, you know, a good amateur uh, marathon runner um, would do it you know, in a normal marathon in just under four hours, say. That's, you know, the four hour mark is, is something that people always aim for. Now, if you, were, if you were about a four hour marathon runner, what would you do this race in? What would you be hoping for? Well, I'd, I'd put you around the five plus hour mark. One of the challenges is that you could be good at a marathon and you would be destroyed by the first eight, nine, 10 K climb. And so mm. trying to transition it. But if you were a good mountain runner, a good trail runner and you and here's Eli uh, looking in that it's an overtake here of yeah. um, this this may be Langdon um, or one of but, the one of the Kenyan runners yeah of them run together and um, but you, someone like um, if we think of Maud Mathis last year uh, she's won here twice before she set the record she ran a 249 and her best marathon pace is 230 mm. uh, Killian's run a 225 if he actually trained for a marathon properly, he'd be in the low two tens, I'd imagine. And so you can see, you know, it, it takes you a lot longer to run. It's 31K than it would a marathon. Um, but we can see now, this is Ro Roberto De Lorenzi. We've got Thibaut Baradian, we've got El Hussein, um, and we've got Eli Hemming. These are the, the more classic trail runners who have clearly let our, our faster runners go. Yeah, they're going to let them do that work now. And I want to talk about El Uzin, who's in the orange there, isn't he? Now, now he's Moroccan and he has been sniffing around the, you know, the top podium positions for a long time. But he got his first win just a few weeks ago, didn't he? In the Dolomiths run, which was the third run of the Golden Trail World Series. Yeah, it was. Oh, and we've got Nick here now. Nick, oh, here Nick she on is. screen. Um, oh, this is uh, hopefully not, not a, the fact she's spitting now hopefully means she's not dehydrated, which, which can be a sign of that sometimes. Um, but she looked like she was moving well. But yeah, Elisine El won the Dolomis run, which he's never run, a, he's never won a Golden Trail series race in five attempts. Five, so five years of trying. He's come second numerous times. He came second overall in the series last year, winning it in the final race by coming second. Um, and, and so he's been someone who's been low on confidence. He, he likes to sit behind runners. And we're, we're back with Nienke now. And we're, we're going to be, we're going to ask, look how steep that is. I know. I mean, blimey. I mean, that, that would take, she looks, she, she looks, doesn't look yeah, comfortable, does she? She doesn't. Like she's been walking a bit, hands on her head, spitting a bit. Can I talk to you about, about water, David? And, and you see some of the runners actually started with a water bottle in hand. And some people may think, oh, that's a bit strange. So what's, this, what's the situation with that? So th there, are, there are at least, at least seven stops they can pick up water. But the, the challenge in this race, as you can see, they, they've got bottles on them now, but they won't be feeling too hot, too high de dehydrated yet. But you need to start taking on nutrition early because by the time you come out at uh, a Ponchette, a Chandlin, and start to pick up the pace, the temperature has significantly increased. And so we've seen a lot of runners who don't drink early enough. And by the time they realize they're dehydrated, it's too late. So, um, yeah, but Nienke, I'm, I, she, I'm not feeling confident. She keeps changing between running styles here doesn't she she doesn't look particularly smooth or comfortable and 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 this is one of the challenges of a course like this because it the gradient does change there is a gradient of as you can see that two runners up the person put their their hands on their leg on their legs and started to actually hike and there is depending on your style a gradient where hiking is faster and so one of the questions is do, you, do i just jog on through this and potentially use slightly more energy but run slightly quicker or do i try and save my legs and instead um put my hands on my legs and and, and just hike up this so we um, we're having some updates from the field um monica flory is in second at the moment behind um behind Filaris and Nienka um, is, we're waiting for an update on her. In fourth place was Joyce for the women. Nienka is in third place. So um, Sophia was actually further back than we'd expected. So this is more like what we're expecting to see. Nienka ahead of um, Sophia. We thought Ali Mack would be up there as well. 
um, and, and Joyce, the runner, we didn't know was going to be here in, until late yesterday. But we're, we're back at the front. And here we are. There's no one behind him. Look, there's a gap. There's a clear gap already. And can I ask you, yeah, so you can see Remy here in third, number nine in the white. He has got a bottle there. What, what's in that? What do we think? With Remy, it's likely to be some electrolytes and some nutrition. And, and one of his challenges, and, and significantly, we don't see... Um, we don't see Philemon or Patrick holding a water bottle. Mm. And I think this could be a mistake. They're used to training at four degrees. They're not used to the heat. And so they're not, they're likely, they're less likely to have been taking on nutrition during their training. And during the races, their, their season tends to be shorter than 31 kilometer races. And so this could be really significant for later in the race. Remy traditionally has struggled with his stomach. And so if we look at races like uh, Mont Blanc previously, and Sierra's now, he's not been able to take on enough nutrition. And so he's often fallen away in the second half of the races. This year, he, he seems to have got more of control over his nutrition and more of a handle on it. Um, and we'll see him drinking throughout this. But um, th his, his feedback has been he now feels confident of his nutrition. And that's so vital for those last 10 kilometers. We talk about people falling over. Um, the glycogen that turns into glucose, your glucose is used about 30% of it for your brain in, your in these races. And if you're not taking on the right nutrition, you stop to con you stop concentrating you s you make bad decisions you and that's stumble you and you fall over yeah. yeah absolutely so we we've spoken about the kenyans there that they um they obviously do do some training in kenya but the last few months they've been in austria what about remy bonnet who's who's swiss where has he been training so remy has also been training at altitude um in switzerland as well he's got his eye partly on pikes peak Okay. which is our next re race in America. That starts at 2,000 metres and climbs to 4,000 metres, where if you're not used to that, that is a crushing level of altitude. There is also a massive prize because the record hasn't been beaten for years. Matt Carpenter set it um, 30 years ago or so. So if Remy can beat the record, he gets an extra 10,000. So he's going to be, um, he's already at altitude with the expectation of moving out to um out to colorado and and actually being in a hotel the highest hotel in colorado this is ali mac now we're seeing you can see her with her hands on her legs um she she's the only person who beat in the nk last season she she beat her in two races in our finals in our, in our five day back-to-back -back challenge and so um this is a good sign for her actually that she is is further down the field because she traditionally has started very very fast she is a very good climber and so she she clearly is pacing with the the the, the end of this race in mind um, so the fact she's back is not necessarily a bad sign um, she she is someone we expect to be potentially top three here today as yeah well. and Ali Ali last night I'm um, at the press conference she was asked us you know does she think she can beat the NK? Does she think she has it? She's she's possibly the only one in the field that has beaten her. And she was very honest and she said, no, she yeah. doesn't She doesn't think she can beat her, which um, maybe it was with tactics. Who knows? I mean, let's see how this race pans out. But um, she doesn't think that she's going to be winning here, but she's hoping for top 10. Yeah, and, um, and and I think she was being a bit modest on the top 10 there, but that that's Ali's kind of style. And, and certainly top five, we... I, I think if she wasn't top five, she'd probably be a bit disappointed. But a lot of these runners will have a time in mind because you just don't know who's going to turn up. But Nienke is coming in with, with such great form. And we, we've, we've just had an update that the men's... There's, we've got our three leaders here. There's a group 20 seconds behind them, a third group 30 seconds behind them, and a fourth group 55 seconds behind them. So it's not massive gaps. If we, if we, we talked about Andrew... Um, who was in 21st at this kind of stage previously. But even Robbie Simpson was in 11th and 12th um, on the climb and came in second two years ago. We've seen um, um, Cesare Maestri. He was way back and came in third. So the fact there are so many runners in, in these groups less than a minute behind, they're going to eat up this ground as soon as they get to Ponchette and Chandelin. And how about the three of them running together here? Because um, if you're Remy Bonnet, he did um, the Marathon de Mont Blanc and in first place, basically, you know, 
all the way, didn't yeah. he? Well, for, yeah. for a very long stint of it. Do you want to be out on your own leading it? Or do you, you know, is there some sort of comfort of running with the pack? You know, in cycling, when you have that support and, mm. and they, they, I mean, it's a bit different with the with the wind and everything else in running compared to cycling. But does it help having some runners in front of you and then breaking away later? Or do you just want to be ahead for the whole thing? And this very much comes down to your mentality because some people love to be chased it gives them that adrenaline and that fear factor and you'll see those type of people are there are the runners that break records by huge amounts because they just they just fear too much that someone could be catching them someone some other runners and, and we can see Fillory's here she's uh she's she's really uh, trying to push as hard as she can on this hill and you can see she's putting her hands on her legs to try and try and romp up these hills um this, this is a great sign for her. She is very fast across the top as well. We do know, though, that the downhill is where she really struggles. And she came to our, our series finals um, to try and practice that. And it's, it's an element that she'll have in her mind. So she'll be running on fear across the top, knowing Nienka's coming. Because Nienka, is the, she came third in the European Marathon mm. last season. That wasn't actually a great race for her. You know, I... I I personally thought she could win that, and I, I think in the back of mind, she she knew she could have done if she didn't have stomach issues. She her second marathon was a two twenty two. Gosh, and, and, and it, this is this is yeah. These are exceptional runners. I mean, that's not that far off like the world record, is yeah. it? Really, in, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, absolutely. And if you think the world record, um, you know, two fifteen, two sixteen, two seventeen, I can't recall off the top of my head. She's and and she's so early into it. But this is the race. But for Nienke, actually, this is where she announced herself on the world scene. Prior to that, she'd only run the Zermatt Marathon. She was a hockey player in the Netherlands. And during lockdown, when she couldn't play hockey, she moved with her degree to Switzerland to, um, to do... I think it was... We, we, well, she's, I know that she's got a doctorate now. Yeah. I know she's, she's brainy. Uh, yeah, we're she... speaking to Nienke and, and, her, and her, her boyfriend, Lars, yesterday. Mm. Um, yeah, saying how brainy she is. And now, now she's a full-time runner, like transitioned from field hockey. And it's just such a great story. And she just clearly loves it so much. She's so excited to be here. Um, and, and this race means a lot to her. But, but Philaris is really putting in a good shift. Can you talk to me about, um, you know, it, is climbing her specialty? How is she on the flat? How is she on the descent? So Fillerese came second in the VK, uh, the virtual kilometre at the World Championships a couple of months ago. And so she's very, she is just, ex she's very strong on long climbs. We saw last year, um, she still ran very fast across the top as well. And um, she was, she was behind Maud and um, she wasn't really caught by anyone behind her. But as soon as she hits the descent, it is very sharp descend, descending at the end. Um, she really struggles there, and the, we, we have to hope for, Phil, for Fillerese that she, she keeps concentration and doesn't trip, because I think if she were to fall, that potentially could slow her down significantly and lose her confidence. We also saw Lucy there, um, Lucy Marigi, Marigi. She's won here three times in the past. Um, she's a fantastic runner from Run Together, and she's actually one of the reasons why we're seeing so many good runners come through the run together team she is a, a, a real inspiration to them she's in our top 10 as a potential top tenner but we don't expect her to, to necessarily be challenging because even when she was winning she was winning in kind of 254 times whereas uh, we'd expect nienka if she is running to her full capacity to be challenged for that that 249 record potentially 250 and below and so lucy we don't expect to be top five today Okay, and we're currently in the forest, but this doesn't last for that much longer, does it? And also, the worst of the climb's over, isn't it? Now we're almost, we're, you know, we're at the, the six, seven kilometre mark, and, and it will start to get better for some people. I mean, some people love the climb, but some people will be willing this to be over. However, the, the forest does provide coolness, doesn't it? It does provide cover. So as soon as this bit's over, they are going to be hit by the sun. And I can tell you, by looking outside our window now, we are positioned by the finish line in Zanao. It's hot, everyone's in their, in their t-shirts, their shorts, they've got their flags, but the sun is shining and it doesn't look like there's a cloud in the sky. And, and we've, we've got a nice update on, on our, our women's field as well, because, and while they're in the trees, it's quite hard for our, run, our camera runners to get to them. But the, we, have, we know the Fillerese is leading. She has a 25 
second gap over second place, who is Monica Faria from Romania. Fantastic performance from her so far. In third is Joyce. She, she's, she is only 30 seconds down. Um, one minute, 40 seconds. So quite a significant gap is then Sophia Lockley. And in fifth place, two minutes down is Nienke. Um, that is like two minutes on on Fillerice is is that a lot? Yeah, that was like quite a lot. That is quite a lot. I I think she can reel that in. Um, but it, you know, Fillerice is running very well. Significantly though, the Joyce is up there. She's mm. in third place, thirty seconds down. She is a far more aggressive descender. Okay. Um, she is also very quick across the top as well. So Fillerice and Joyce, they are both part of the, the, the Kenyan team. So have they been training together? So they, they know each other well, they know each other's strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, they, they'll know each other extremely well. The, the slight difference is that Fillerice, um, last season Fillerice wasn't with Run Together. And so she did a lot of her, her trail running training, um, mainly coming through the Golden Trail to the final. She did all five days. I think she came something like sixth or seventh overall in her time. and. Um, she she was absolutely beaten up by that experience because she just wasn't used to the type of technical trail. So actually, she comes this year as a different runner because of that that exposure that she's given herself. But they will have trained together. And speaking to Joyce, she she walked into the the restaurant yesterday. I wasn't. And and is this a is this a gap out the front? This looks like. Um, is this Philemon? Yeah. Oh, this no, is this Patrick. is Patrick. This, this is, is Patrick. Patrick. So we think this is the cameraman turning around. So uh, Philemon is, is ahead um, with, with Remy. And he's just turned around to, fi to, to film Patrick, we believe. So it's, it's still a tight group of three. Such beautiful shots, though, isn't it? Isn't it coming through these trails um, in Sierra, in Switzerland? And I mean, if this doesn't make you want to get into trail running, I don't know. We don't know what does, David. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, this course, there's the beauty of this course as soon as they get out of the woods is, is insane. Now, talking about relationships, Patrick and Philemon also train together and know each other very well. It is Philemon's 21st birthday today. Today? Today. And he's celebrating it by running this race. So do you think that's going to give him an extra little spurt? Oh, it must. I mean, he, he is super fun, high energy. And he, we, were, we were filming him yesterday. And one of the questions, uh, pal, from... Oh, no, this looks like Patrick is, is by himself. Patrick has broken free. This And we talked about the climbing and... They've gone through Ponchette. They're coming up to, Ka to Chandelin, which is the 2000 meter mark. And this is where they can run a little bit more fluidly. You can see they're not quite as hunched. And, and look at that stride length of Patrick. He's looking very fast. And so we're just trying to figure which of these, which of the left or the right screen is our leader. Um, because, <coughs> Oh, there wow. we go. So, Patrick is the leader then, followed by Remy and Philemon. Wow, th I mean, this is significant because Patrick is trying to attack on this slight climb still because he knows that Philemon is a more aggressive descender and faster across the top. And significantly yesterday when Philemon didn't think he could beat Patrick. Patrick is the eldest, eldest statesman within their group, within Run Together. And at the World Championships, um, we've talked about Patrick being the, the virtual kilometre champion. But actually the longer distance, the up and down, um, Philemon came second and Patrick came fifth. And speaking to the cameras yesterday, the camera crew, that's changed his belief that he, he said that actually today he knows he's got the ability to beat Patrick. And I think he's always slightly been in his shadow. OK, and there is quite a big age gap there as well, isn't there? Yeah, there's, there's about six years difference between them. And even though Philemon has been doing very well pre-season in his, uh, like Theon Dixon, I think he, got the, he, he won there last week. Um, he, his times haven't been as quick as Patrick's last year. And, uh, and Phil, I mean, it's his 21st birthday, so maybe it's his, this is his coming of age oh, race, no, you, you know, and he's got, he's got a point to prove. And here we are back. Is that Sophia? Sophia Lockley yes, there? Sophia. Yep. And just and talking about, about trail running in general, yes, right? How, when we talk about a technical trail, David, what, what do we mean by that? I mean, we can see lots of roots, lots of rocks, lots of uneven surface here. Um, is this technical or is it only technical when you're going downhill? Talk to me about that. So we can see the, the root system here, as you point out, and it doesn't, like when you're running up, technical doesn't really matter too much unless it's slippery or, or exposed and you're on a, a, a cliff edge. But if you, if you try to imagine running down this pace at uh, kind of 15, 
minute 5k uh, pace uh, you know three minute kilometers that's the kind of pace some of them will be running this isn't technical but if you run this fast it's still incredibly hard to actually uh, know where to put your feet so it's kind of like when we, when we talk about technical it's almost like the risk factor isn't it like yeah, yeah like how risky is it if we say something super technical it means oh the more you push it the more likely it is you could you could fall over you could trip you could yeah just just push it a bit too far absolutely and, and one of the challenges if you don't if you don't know a course if you're running very quickly without knowing the course you, you don't necessarily know where the turns are coming and so you can be running too fast for a turn but also if you if, if you know the course well, you know where some certain rocks are, you know where there are going to have to be little chicanes, and so you can adjust your pace accordingly. Now, Sierra's are now yeah, isn't known as a technical race at all, but the downhill at the end is significantly steep, which turns a trail like this that isn't known for being technical into something that is still actually quite hard to run down and we'll see at the end the different postures where some people are attacking striding out and some people are on their back foot and actually slowing down because it's so steep two things i want i want to talk about here they're, they're still climbing but we, we haven't really actually mentioned that obviously the race starts in in the wonderful town sunny town of sierra and it ends in zinal so it's an a to b race isn't it david and that differs from most of them in the golden trail world series yeah the the, the a to b is because of the history behind it and um, it, it, it's logistically very hard for the organizers. Um, but it, it also means that the, in, in terms of the athletes, you have to get up early. The reason why this race is starting in 11 is because they have to travel to the start of the race. And that isn't really your preference as an athlete. It's much nicer to, to get up, have your breakfast, and to be able to almost look outside the window and be in complete control of, of everything between the moment you get out of bed and you start the race. So some of them might potentially be tired and won't have drunk enough water even on the coach journey over. Let, let's talk about that morning routine then. So if I'm a professional trail runner, which unfortunately I'm never going to be, but I could, I could pretend, let's pretend. But maybe, maybe fortunately when you see some of these climbs, you're like, thank goodness I've got the excuse not to have to do this. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the view, let's say that. So you get up in the morning, what, what do you eat and how, how, how much do you eat, how long before you race? So a lot of these athletes would have been taking on kind of high carbohydrates the, the two days leading up to this. And there's, there's differing views on how much you should take. In the morning, you, you want to make sure that all the food has cleared your system. So you typically take up to 150 grams. It's quite a lot of what, grams of carbohydrates. Okay, so what are we talking about in terms of a large bowl of cereal or, or what? In, in terms of like grams, if you're not working with that, what, what are we looking at? Even, even more than that. So okay. I, I typically would have, when I was racing, a, a bagel, uh, two bagels as soon as I wake up because you want that to clear your system so typically you, you wouldn't have things with high fiber well, in. You, it, it, it's, it's fine to have your sugars your, your carbohydrates but you take this on at least two hours but typically two and a half hours before the race because the intention is that those the carbohydrates get to your muscles they top up your glycogen stores and you can also ideally have the couple of a couple of minutes a couple of trips to the toilet to clear your system of that before you're then racing. So um, there have been studies to show how to reduce um, fiber before races so that you have basically less poop in your system and you're a slightly <laughs> lighter runner. You were, you were, you're grappling with how, how to say that, weren't you? <laughs> you? You went for poop, which, yeah, I appreciate. You know, we have to be honest here. Like, nutrition is such an important part of this. And you've mentioned that so many of the runners have stomach issues as they go, don't they? And, and this is where the heat hits you. You can see that now. Gosh, and yet that it's so exposed, and you can see one of our one of our cyclists there who's who's filming it, I believe, or maybe they're just they're just on the course. <laughs> <laughs> they have, and, and and even our cyclists, are, uh, this is this is coming through Ponchette. So significantly, his time, um, we've got our records on there. Um, we are we're forty nine twenty, so we're we're quite a bit back on Killian's record. In some ways, that's surprising because these two are so good 
at climbing. Mm. And Killian is known as a very fast downhill runner. He was when he was going for the record um, back in 2019, he was two minutes ahead of the previous records, but only 22, 20, he was 24 seconds behind by Hotel Weisshorn, which is 20 kilometers. So it shows he slows down in this section compared to these runners. Okay, so at Ponchat, that was that, that first kind of, we, we do this by, um, that was at 1,870 meters. And this, this is, this is an aid station where, well, you can see runners can take on water. And how many have we got of these on the course, David? So there, there's a seven, seven official stops they can get water. And, but there's only two stops that they can take on aid from the Golden Trail. The, last night they could come and leave their water bottles, their gels, and that gives them the opportunity to actually have the exact nutrition they want to be taking on the course. So you saw Remy started with a bottle, and look at these gaps opening up already. These, these are big gaps, it shows you the difference in speed, and we weren't sure whether Remy's pace this year was going to have improved significantly. So far, the answer is no. The really? Fact that, the fact yeah. that Patrick and Philemon are striding out already, they have put in, and, and they were flowing through this far faster. Um, they, they looked just so much more comfortable than Remy does right now. So, um, He did think that he'd be, if not ahead, like with them. Yeah, I mean, Remy has set, Remy has the, the world record for the, for the vertical climb. He has set the, the, the best ever trail score. Um, it's, it's an independent score for all time he set this year, which was almost all uphill. So he'd have come into this supremely confident of mm. his climbing, but also he knows he's, he's got that super fast 10K time in him, and this does not look like a fluid Remy. No, and he's one minute, 18 seconds behind, which is about three and a half minutes or so down on, the, down on Killian's record going through that. And we were thinking, hoping maybe that Remy could challenge that record today, but at the moment, it doesn't look too promising. And then uh, behind in, in fourth place, we have got um, a runner we haven't spoken about just yet. Yeah, we've got... racing today so it's fantastic to see him here his uh, his background he's actually from ukraine which um perfect to see him here yeah absolutely and that's why i love the, the golden trail world series i mean not every runner runs every race but you get such a mix don't you and you get also it's just it's just people from all over the world we've got runners from from china from romania from america and they can all challenge and that's just one of the reasons i absolutely love this race and the second half is going to be as explosive as the first so uh tune in it's going to get fun zinal village is 1670 meters above sea level at the top end of val Danivers, nestled in an alpine settling where several summits rise up to 4,000 meters after walking for several hours from platz de la lee you can access four refuges, also known as mountain huts, which are departure points for climbing up to the mountain summits. The Pe Petit Mont Montet is a two hour walk from Zanao. While it takes around five hours to reach the Arpitetas, Grand Mountain Tets, and Trasset Mountain Huts. The Weisshorn, Zanao Rothorn, Obergabelhorn, Matterhorn, and Denton Blanche, these five 4,000 meter summits from Imperial Crown. It dominates the Val d'Anivers and is an integral part of the Danivers people's DNA. Many climbing enthusiasts accompanied by guides from the valley attempt to climb these legendary peaks aptly named the race of the four, the five 4,000s. Zero Zanao pays tribute to these mountains. I mean, yeah, I mean, just the, the, the scenery we can see here, it really is a sensational place to have a race. And we can see why it's been here for 50 years. And this is the 50th anniversary. And I mentioned it at the beginning, but I just want to bring it up again, that the organisers invited all of the all of the previous winners of these races. And we have got some of them here today. We've got some, you know, they're in their 70s who won it years ago and are, who are having another pop today. They started maybe really early this morning. And 
it's just great to see so much history steeped in a race and 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 just be here and, and soak it all up yeah we i mean we're having a great time i hope the runners are, are feeling hydrated and having a great time here and and who can we see on our screen there? Well, they've made it out of the forest. They are on the next set, on en route to Ponchette by the looks of it. Yeah, well, I'm not quite sure who these, these runners are, actually. But um, we, I mean, in talking about the, the, the runners of yesteryear coming, like pa Pablo Vigil, he ran a 2.33 here. Um, in the, the sixth to the ninth um, Sierras are now. Um, so this looks like our this is the Romanian second runner. Second yeah. place runner, um, which is, she's still holding up incredibly well. This, uh, Madalena Floria. So she's, we know that she's faster at the shorter distances. She's clearly um, got big ambitions today on this world stage. So, so fair play to her. And in, in terms of the, our other runner who's in fourth place, we've looked into their background and Vitali uh, Shafa, he doesn't have much of a, a, a background in trail running, but we know he's very good at cross country. In terms of it, he's the, the national champion for Ukraine. He's got a, a kind of 3,000 meter time of eight minutes, which is extremely good. And his best performance is a 2.11 at the Frankfurt Marathon. So he's in fourth place now, but actually with that kind of pace, the fact that he's held on this climb, we'd expect to see him to start tracking down Remy, which if you're Remy and you're not feeling good and you're overtaken early, will be very concerning. I, I think in the back of your mind as well, if, you're, if you are Remy, he's, he's led up the climb in previous years and it's, it's blown him up. He, he finished 12th one year, he finished 8th in another, having led with Killian and with Petru Mamu. And so he's used to going through this section of the race, feeling awful and dropping away. So he's going to have to mentally change that this year if he wants to win this. So David, I want to talk a bit more about the route. So it's 31 kilometers in total, which is, which is slap bang um, in between a half marathon and a marathon distance, isn't it? Now, I think the, the, the ele elevation, we're looking at 2,200 meters. What, what does that feel like? What does that look like? And, and we say that this is the race, this is, this is possibly the pinnacle of the Golden Trail World Series races because it's so steeped in history. And, you said that it's where road runners meet trail runners. Talk to me about that. Is that simply about the terrain? At the moment, we can see it's a bit traily. And and if you if you look at that 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 uh, trail we had there, that's not really trail. That looks more like a kind of fire track. So Philemon was running up that hill, still quite a steep incline, but there are no rocks there. You're you're not on a a kind of trailly path where you have to choose your footing so you see remy here this is lovely to run on so if you're a marathon runner you can come in here and you could even have your road flats on this part of the trail and not worry about it okay i want to pick you up on that road flats that, that you're talking about trainers there aren't you so you're talking that you don't need to have um like even trail shoes probably for this bit like with trail shoes obviously have those lugs underneath which which enable you to grip the surface and and you're not going to slip as easily so i mean all of these runners will have trail shoes on won't they which will have lugs on them they probably will but it because it's been quite warm coming up to this there is a chance that some of the runners won't if you went to someone like Zagama and you were wearing your your thick foamed base plated shoes you just wouldn't be able to get down without a broken ankle <laughs> you need the gamma's wet and muddy and slippy isn't it absolutely and and, it, and that distance from the ground just creates imbalance and so even someone like fred tranchant who came third in the dolomis run he's an orienteerer he removes the 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 the, the innards from his trainers so that he can feel the ground better um and but this race, as you can see here, and, and this looks like, our, I think... Our this is Monica, Monica Madalena Floria, yeah. And um, as you can see here, there is a lot of running where some of the athletes might not necessarily worry about having trail shoe because you don't necessarily need grip on this course mm. when it's dry. You need to be able to place your foot successfully. So it's more to do with focus than actually being able to get traction back from the ground. You can see how hot it is because because uh, Monica Madalena Floria there, she was just pouring the water over her head instead of consuming it. Maybe she should have done a bit of both. But go, but going back to the shoe point, we see at the moment there's a bit of a rise in a lot in a lot of trails. She's having a very a lot of foam, a lot of padding. Now, 
why is that? And and is that the right thing for trail shoes? Because some people want to feel the, the, the ground more to have more control, but then others are opting for a bit more of a of cushion. Yeah, and the, you know these plated shoes, a lot of people assume it's the plate that gives you that rebound, but because this new foam, it's it, it gives you more returns, so it, it actually pushes you back. So it projects you forward slightly. On downhills, it makes a real difference, but that that gives you less control. And so we'll, we'll try and see what shoes. I, 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 I suspect because these runners, they're not really mouth, they're not really marathon runners. Um, you know, Philemon, his speciality is, is mountain running. And so he'll be in some, some on trainers which are uh, slightly thinner mm -hmm. and, and giving him that control. But we, we let, this will be something for us to look out for when we come back to Vitaly to see what he's running in because He'll, he'd have been told this is this is a fast a fast race that mountain uh, marathon runners can do well in. Yeah. He might not have thought through his, his <laughs> shoe selection, which actually on a day like today, if he's got up to the top of the peak okay. um, and that okay. climb okay. in okay. his road shoes, now is the time where he can really use the extra speed they'll give him. The challenge will be on that steep descent. If you're coming down with a, a platform. It's hard wearing platforms anyway, as, as we both know, yeah. <laughs> um, let alone let alone if you're you're having to try and balance them. But this looks like Sof Sophia Lockley. Yeah, this is this is Sophia. And I want to I want to continue on that. Um, the, the kind of um, we're talking about shoes. I want to talk about what else trail runners wear. So you, obviously you can see majority of them in shorts and T-shirts. Some of them have um, like a, 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 a vest on a running vest. Sophia just had one on there. And does that have gels in and water in like like talk me through that? And, and it's quite unusual actually to see a run and look how fluid Philemon yeah. looks. It's quite unusual to see a runner wearing a vest in, in Sierra's now because in a lot of trail races there are mandatory kits for your safety that you need to wear. But that, that doesn't happen in Sierra's now because it's, as you can see, you're, you're always in a safe place. Mm. You're, you're um, not remote. Um, yeah. I like some of these races where you have to race through the night and, and nobody knows where you are. Like this is pretty controlled. We've got people everywhere. It's yeah. pretty safe, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And Ooh. Just going back to the women, though, we have got an update. And it's actually Flore Monica Madalena who is in first place at the moment. And then we've wow. got Phila Reese in second. And then we've got Sophia Luckley in the third. That's that's wild. I mean, we weren't expecting maybe um, Madalena Monica Flore to be to be ahead still. And it, it looks like point. it looks like Nienka's not even in fifth. And yeah, and this this is incredible to see um, because there's nothing in in. There's nothing in Monica's background that suggests she's necessarily got the pedigree from her previous races to be winning in a race like this. She's done well in trail. She's done in short, done well in shorter distances, but this is long and this is super fast. So um, at the moment, from, from the time gaps, we've got Monica at 58.25 through the, um, through that. And Maud's time was 57.07 for reference, the, the record. So that's, a, that's that's like one minute and, and 18 seconds. That's not bad, is it? That's pretty good. And as, especially because you know, Maud, Maud, Maud was a good overall runner, but not known for a downhill either. So um, Filaris is it's in, almost a minute back from Monica and Sophia 10 seconds behind her. So looking at these runners now and, and Joyce on her shoulder, another 30 seconds back. Looking at the way it is now, you'd expect Sophia to start actually uh, and, and Filaris to start tracking back. It'll be interesting to see who's faster out of Filaris and Sophia across the flats because Sophia's pace in Mont Blanc was, was really a next level to what we were expecting on her last season. We know Filaris can be fast over the flats, but currently I'd be expecting Sophia and Joyce to be tearing through this field and Nienke, you would on paper should do, but the fact that she's she's not even top six, e either she's pacing to her heart rate, she's pacing to feel, or and and she's still got this ability in her, or she is not having a good day. I'm not gonna lie, when we looked at her earlier, she just 
She just didn't look right, did she? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, myself, I'm more of a, a park runner. And you even know from that, you know, who, who's looking comfortable. I mean, we can see the leaders in, um, in, in Patrick and, and Philemon, and they are smooth as you like, aren't they? Yeah, and we've, we've, got, we've had some more updates, actually. In fifth place at the moment is Emma Pooley from, uh, from the UK. She's raced hit well here before in the past. Nienk is in sixth, um, and Susanna Sapunki is in seventh. So... Ali Mack missing from the top 10 as well. For someone such a good climber, we know she had issues in the World Champs and uh, clearly having some issues here as well. But but Remy, he's he's looking a little bit more fluid now. Yeah, he is, isn't he? And it's just and um, by fluid, I, I think we mean we mean that smooth sensation. Mm. Don't we? we mean no sort of limp, no what going to one side, no like head down. It's it's just that relaxed nature, shoulders down, arms just moving like that. And, and typically, if someone looks beautiful, that, that's a good sign for them. But this race is about to erupt. Hello and welcome to the Golden Trail World Series. The best trail running show is back and we are buzzing to bring you all of the action from today's race. It is the fourth stage of the series and we're in Switzerland. The world's best trail runners will participate in one of the oldest trail races in the world. This race, Sierra Zanal, was born in 1973 and this year it's celebrating its 50th anniversary. Your commentators today guiding you through are myself, Jess Rogers, and the wonderful trail running expert, David Hellard. It's going to be a right cracker. And we've had a good start, haven't we, David? But let's let's look back at the calendar today. So started in May for the Golden Trail World Series in Zagama in Spain, then Marathon de Mont Blanc in June in France, then just recently was the Dolomus Run in Italy. And next will be America and finished with the finale in Italy, but let's take a look at what's happened so far. Well, this is our this is our top ten for the season so far. Significantly, because the Golden Trail has a mix of half marathons to marathon distance, some very technical, hard terrain, some smoother like today. Not everyone's going to be running. So, from this list, Sophia Lockley and uh, Daniela Omus and Sylvia Nordska are going to be racing. Um, Miao Yao is on the course as well. And so these positions are likely to change. Sophia is at the moment is looking like she could take the lead in the overall series. Should we look at what the men's overall rankings are looking like as well then? So Manny Marias, he's known as a technical specialist. This is a race for road runners. So he's not here today. Remy Bonet and El Hussein El Azoui are both running and they're expecting to be top five, top three, maybe winning today. So we'd expect at the end of this race is 200 points for a win. This top 10 will change significantly. Only two big names from this list to look out for. But actually our top two runners, um, from, we're an hour in, they're continuing the rest of this season. So this is going to change dramatically over the course of the rest of this year. And that's what I love about the Golden Trail World Series. You do have runners from all over and the world, the overall rankings for it can change race by race. But David, can you take us through what's happened in the first hour of this race as we join it now? And we're going to see that the footage here, it's not gone to plan for some of our runners. In the men's, we knew that Remy Bonnet was coming in, the one of the best climbers in the world. He, he won our series last year and he's a Swiss runner who's never won Sierra's an hour. We can see him in number nine here. He is one of our race favorites, but Patrick Kippingino, last year's favorite who didn't quite perform, he's returned, he's focusing on this race. He's won the world championships at the vertical kilometer. So we knew those two would do well. And Philemon Ombogo, who came um, third last year, he is amongst it. And so the three of them let out. The, this race is known for being where road runners meet trail. And so we can see here, um, Hendrik Pfeiffer, he's got a 2.10 marathon time leading out the very start. But this is where Philemon took control. Um, he's someone who is known for his faster trail running across the top and his descending. And so we were surprised that actually he was attacking Patrick and Remy at this stage. 
and it, and it was those three in the men's, the two Kenyans and Remy Bonnet of Switzerland, local hero, really wanting to do it for his country here today. It's the one that he's been missing, um, what they were leading it out to begin with. And in the women's, David. Well, we, we didn't quite see her on screen here, but, but Filarese, um, Filarese Kisang, also from Kenya, was leading out. The big surprise behind her, though, is Madalena Floria, who's from Romania, hasn't really performed in Golden Trail or, or had that many significant wings on, on the world stage, was in second place. And Ninkia, who is our 220 marathon runner, she won the series last year, strong favorite for this race. She wasn't looking good on that first climb and was back down in fifth, but this is th this is um, Filarese who we talked about. She came second in the vertical kilometer climbing at the World Championships. So don't let her running style fool you. She is looking at, she is extremely comfortable here and, and, and led out very strongly. Absolutely, and and the Kenyan contingent is very strong this year and they're, they're wearing, the, they're, they're, the, a lot of them are, um, are from the Run Together team and they're in the orange shorts and the, and the yellow tops. And yeah, you can just see how how smooth it was. And and this is, the, that was Filarese uh, extending his lead, wasn't it? Absolutely, they, they were grouped together for the first seven kilometers or so, but as soon as that smoother running started, that's when the gap started to show. And so we had uh, Patrick Kipingino start to take to the front um, and Remy, as you can see here, was, was being gapped by our two Kenyan runners. Yeah, he's sitting in third at the moment and, and you can see him going through that aid station there and he was, I think he was about a minute and a half down from the, from the start. And another name we weren't expecting, Vitaly Schaffer from Ukraine. He's got a 2.11 marathon time. He doesn't really have much experience in trail and he, he is running incredibly well so far. But this is, um, this is Madalena coming through in, into the A station. As soon as the running started um, on the smoother trails, she took the lead, which was um, a real surprise for everyone. So at the moment, in first place, we have Madalena from Romania. We have Filarese Kisang in second, Sophia Lockley from America in third, Joyce Sajiru in fourth, and Emma Pooley from the UK in fifth. And what a first hour it's been. And now we join, we join back with the, we join back with the, the men's race here. And you can see one of our cyclists there just following. And I really want to talk, David, about how we film things here at the Golden Trail World Series, because it really is exceptional. Now, it's, it's not filmed like other sports where you have maybe motorcycles following the athletes. And, and this is partly down to the terrain. You can see motorcycles will not be able to get on here. And also much more environmentally friendly that we are able to film with professional, basically, or very high level trail runners or cyclists following these athletes with cameras. They have a transmitter on them and they carry that. And that's about three, three kilograms of extra weight. And they follow, I mean, look now. So just want to tell people at home, we had the first seven kilometers, David, and, and this race is really, it's, it's split into three parts, isn't it? The, yeah. first, the first seven kilometers is all uphill. And now we're moving to a bit more of a flat, bit more of rolling. And then, then it's sense, isn't it? And, and if you can see the contrast between those two shots, you really get a sense of how up and down this is. So while we say this is faster running, it's still a lot of climbing in there. Significantly though, the, there is a steep downhill at the end. And if we look at previous races, last year's winner, Andrew Blanis, he came through 21st place after seven kilometers and still won. And we've seen in previous years that as the heat increases and the the intensity of that first climb starts to take its toll on our runners, just because you have a big lead at this stage doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to win this race. Yeah, and this is Philemon in, in second place here. And I have to say, um, both Patrick and, and Philemon from Kenya have slightly surprised us. Or is it that Remy Bonnet has, has surprised us by not being at the front? You know, which and, and one is it? We've got a walker already, and, and it just shows how how much this, this can take out of you. Surely this can't be... Uh, our third man. We, we'd hoped that they're walk, not walking at this stage. Um, but Remy hasn't quite lived up to what his training was suggesting so far because if anything, we were expecting him to be performing better at the start of the race than towards the end. We know he's done a lot of training on his 10K time, but the big surprise here really is that the Philemon has been attacking so aggressively. He is only 21, he's 21 today, and he's been in the shadow of Patrick for some time. And, and Patrick has come into this race 
Um, this has been his big focus for the year. So we were Brilliant. expecting him to, to be the person who was leading out and striding out, but he hasn't quite got the fluid fluidity we're expecting. And we're back with the women here. And Sophia, Sophia Lackley, I mean, the, the last time we were on, on Eurosport with the Golden Trail World Series was at the Marathon de Mont Blanc. And that was Sophia Lackley. She's only 21. She's from America. She is a Nordic skier. She's not even that much of a runner. It was her first marathon. And she looked so strong all the way through for the Marathon de Mont Blanc and, and basically won it from, from beginning to end out on her own. And here, I have to say, she didn't look that comfortable in the climb. She looked all right. But now she looks like she's flying, doesn't she? And, and this, is, this is what we don't know about Sophia. We've never really seen her on these smoother runs to get a sense of what her pace is. She doesn't know herself what her pace is. Um, on, and you can see how super steep that little part is. So um, although it looks like we're coming back to, if, if someone's looking behind like that, that is not a good sign. Um, that really isn't a good sign for them to be able to finish this race. Um, but Sophia, she wasn't sure coming into this how far she would be on those smoother, those smoother trails. Um, but it's looking at the moment, instead of Ninkia Brinkman being the person we're expecting to chase down our leaders, that actually Sophia is the person motoring right now. Um, we know that Madalena is, is someone who hasn't performed at these longer distances as, as frequently. And so that would be the big challenge. But I mean, this, this is game over. This, um, this is sad to see that they've, they've clearly spent too much on that first. So we were nervous that they weren't taking on enough nutrition, enough water up the hill. Um, and you can now see this looks like Fillerice Kisang. This is a very distinct running style. She's looking, she's looking smooth as well. Yeah, I mean, when we talk about running styles, you know, to those who, who might be a little bit new to trail running at home, we're looking, we're looking for flow, aren't we? We're looking for a relatively long, um, a long stride length. Whereas like Fillerice, she's, she kind of like she, she like moves just differently, doesn't she? She's got a real, a real unique style. She kind of like saunters over the course rather than smooth, but it's working for her. Yeah, it's working fantastically. And one of the challenges though is on slightly more technical um, terrain, uh, terrain that she does struggle with her feet and, and actually can, can fall. But we've now had an update that the third runner was uh, Julius Najuri, um, who is someone else we weren't expecting to see here. So he's overtaken Remy, but to be overtaking and looking behind suggests that maybe He's put too much into um, trying to, uh, to capture our leaders, but someone who isn't slowing down, look at these two. This is, so Patrick at the moment is, is leading out. He's looking extremely fast. Philemon was the person we thought would be running faster at this stage, um, but actually he's, he's managed to create a 30, a, a, a one minute, sorry, a 30 second gap over second place, which is, um, we, we expect by the end, he'll need a minute to two minute gap over Philemon to be able to finish ahead of him on that descent. So maybe Patrick knows that he needs to be spending more of his energy now. Yeah, and I mean, I just want to talk a little bit about their relationship because uh, they're both Kenyan. They both run for Run Together and they do, do some of their winter training back in Kenya. But the last few months, they have been positioned. They've been living in Austria for training. So they've been at similar altitude, similar trails to what we find here in Switzerland. However, the, the big difference is that they've actually been training. It's only been about five degrees, hasn't it? It's been, it's been a bit like a, a rubbish British summer for them yeah. where they've been training. And, and this, is, this is one of the... The big challenges is trying to go to altitude that you go to altitude so that you can produce more red blood cells which helps um, get oxygen around your system faster but it's quite rare to have a place like Sierra now that is so sunny and hot at altitude in in the, you know in Europe and so while they've done the, they've made a good decision to train to to get used to this level of oxygen in the air it's been cold while they've been training and it's currently 25 degrees outside. And so this will start to feel extremely hot, particularly if they haven't been taking on water. And we'll see as they go through aid stations later on, if they start to stop and cover themselves and are grasping for water, it's a sign that they haven't got their nutrition quite right. Now yeah. we're, we're here with the first man and this is Patrick um, Kipangino. He was our favorite last year and struggled, but this year he clearly has the form to, uh, to, to, to lead out this race successfully.
and this looks like um, th that running style looked. Is this uh, vice horn we're looking at? Um, oh, this is chandelier. So this is they're coming through the the aid station. We've seen runners actually fall at this stage before because it, there's a lot of uh, noise and trying to pick out your support who's got your water, your water bottle and nutrition can be tricky. So we, we know that Esther last year had a big fall there and it, it really can disrupt your, um, your flow. And I, I want to talk a bit more about the route, David. So this one is, is 31 kilometers. Um, it is between that kind of half marathon and marathon pace for, for people who are familiar with, with those lengths at home. And, uh, and it starts with that really big climb. It's then, it's then a bit more, bit more flat and then it's the descent. And there's about 2,200 meters of, of elevation throughout. Um, and th th about the aid stations, can you talk to me about those? So there, I think there's seven, seven or so in total, and that's where they take on water, but there's only a couple that, that, that are provided by the Golden Trail. Yeah, because, because it, the nutrition of these runners is so unique to themselves. They, some of them will have carbohydrates and electrolytes in their drinks, some of them will be lying in gels, some of them on chews. And so you want to make sure that you are get, you, you don't want to run with everything at the, at the beginning because as you can see, we're looking at, at Patrick here. He's, he, his clothing is super light. You don't want to be weighed down with all of that. And so it gives you an opportunity to, to fully replenish the nutrition that you'd like. We, we've also done a little bit of, of research into Julius. Interestingly, his manager didn't tell me he was one of the ones to watch. Um, so it, it just shows what a great performance he's having. He's got a, a half marathon time of 1.07 back in uh, 2021 and an 825 3000 meter so he's extremely fast and uh, we're here with Philaris um, it's still in second place we can't see significantly the uh, the first place woman ahead of her and, no. and that is a, a huge uh, mental uh, strength for if you if you're leading knowing that the your chaser can't see you yeah absolutely and i, I want to talk about a bit the pace they're going i mean if, if we're if we're looking at philarese's pace she's about 17 kilometers per hour and just to give people some context if you're if you're running at 17 kilometers per hour you're doing about a 35 minute 10k so just to kind of like put some of those numbers in people's heads who you might run at home you might do a park run you know they're running fast and for a very very long time this is super fun and they're coming on a slight downhill into chandelin here so we saw um madalina had already picked up her nutrition here hopefully um hopefully philarese knows who she's looking out for because if you she's, is that something in her left hand there if you miss your nutrition at this stage it could be game over for your race. She, we saw she was trying to grab at a sponge there, didn't quite, and so it's going to be really important. There we go. There's Thomas, her coach. He's uh, he'll be telling her the distances between her and the leader. But also, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, Thomas is a smart coach. He'll be doing his research on where everyone is in the field, and so he'll know um, as, as much as we do about Madalena and be able to tell his athlete how she needs to pace, what the strategy is, and giving her words of encouragement. And, and there is our, our first place runner, Madalina Monica Flora from, from Romania. And, and her running style, I mean, she doesn't look like she's flowing that, right, that much right now, does she? she? She's slightly hunched over. She looks very hot, I have to say. And, and just to give people a bit of an idea, it is hot here today. It's about 28 degrees. The sun really is out. We are positioned at the finish line in Zanau. And, uh, and this race, obviously, it, it is an A to B race, steeped in history. The route has never changed so when we talk about course times or splits that really has stood for the last 50 years which is absolutely exceptional it means you can really compare and and nothing has changed on that route so it starts in sierra and it ends in zanau and right now i can tell you what the the finish line is absolutely pumping there are there are fans everywhere it really is like the event of the year and we've had our splits through from uh, from chandelin and they are on a very fast time Bear in mind that Maud Mathis, our course record holder, ran a 57.07 for the record at this point. So um, Monica has come through 58.16. A minute back is Philaris Kisang, but only nine seconds behind her is Sophia Lockley. And so it's looking like Sophia is leading the charge. A minute back on her is, is Joyce. So Joyce seems to be moving at a similar pace to Sophia. So it wouldn't surprise me if over the next 10K, Sophia and Joyce start to make up those places. There's a lot of running left to go and they're, they're still climbing and climbing and climbing. It's not until they get to um, Nava, which is around the 24 kilometer mark that they actually 
start the full descent. So they'll have a lot of these small little climbs um, and little descents, and that changes their rhythm. But with first man and second man here, they're friends, they know each other extremely well. And um, at the moment, Patrick Kipanjina, the eldest statesman from Run Together, is leading out. But Philemon Umboga, who we know is a faster descender, is behind. It's his birthday. He'll have in his head that he can catch Patrick, but not being able to see him at this stage will be frustrating because he knows that Patrick is running away. And we'd been led to believe that actually Philemon was the person we'd expect to be seeing running better here. But look at Patrick's right knee. This is one of the question marks. Mm, I wanted to actually talk to you about that trail running and injuries. Now, we all know that, that runners do suffer a bit from knees, from joints, from ankles. Um, what, what, are, what are the main things that we expect to see with these runners who put in such high mileage? And you get a lot of falls when you, when you do trail because it doesn't look like that here, but there are rocks everywhere and it's very hard to keep concentration. Patrick has hurt his knee in the past and that has limited his training somewhat. So we knew he was fast. He's done some good times this year, probably not as fast as last year, but there is a bit of a question mark around whether he has the pace to hold this up for a whole 31 kilometers, because this is a long distance for these two runners compared to what they're used to racing. And so while he's leading now, we do expect Philemon to be catching him towards the end. And the fact that Vitali Schaffer has a 2.11 marathon time in fourth place, he'll be chasing them down. So this race is certainly not over. And there is a huge amount of places that will take part, take change place. And we are back now with Sophia Lockley. And to be honest, I feel quite confident in how she's looking here. She did say she's coming into this. It's a mystery to her. It's a mystery to us all. That must unnerve others. You know, she went in to the Marathon de Mont Blanc saying that she'd never run a marathon. She comes out with an epic time and a win of that race. But I just also want to talk about the interesting nature of what we saw there because there was a lot of men in front of her. It was quite single track. That must be quite infuriating. But also, could it be quite like... You know, she's like, oh, I could just overtake this person, overtake that one, and almost give you a bit more of a boost as well. Yeah, I mean, but to, to be fair to those gentlemen, they, they should be aware of who's around them and moving out the okay. way. Um, and, and just and, about, I mean, you can see um, just fans coming out for the day, just supporting these runners all over the course. Yeah, and, and just look how fast Philemon looks. Oh. He doesn't look like he's tired at all from that climb. Um, so he will be, he will be absolutely knowing that Patrick is, is possible and in his sights. But um, Sophia, yeah, she's having to get through that traffic and, and one of the, the, it, the trail does open up now. And so we can see the difference between what she was running and what Philemon is running. So if you're in Sophia's situation where there are a lot of runners ahead of you, it's having that maturity and the experience not to let it frustrate you and to choose the right time to overtake rather than using it. But, oh wow, my goodness, she's this is, yeah, yeah. Sophia has overtaken Philarese. So that means Sophia goes into second place. We did say that she was looking strong, didn't we? And oh, she just looks like she's just got an, an extra gear, doesn't she? It doesn't, so, ooh, doesn't show any signs of slowing it down. And I mean, how many kilometers are we into the race? I think we're about 17 kilometers or so. Yeah, we, we are for the men's, the women's, the women's are a, a fair bit back so the 18 kilometers here um this is not a reflection this is 18 kilometers left in the race so they've run 13 kilometers so far um they've come through chandelin which is the first big aid station where they could change their nutrition but um this this will be heartbreaking for Philarese um to on the climbs where sh you'd expect her to be better than Sophia Very potentially um the, the challenge with Philarese though is she's been like our our other two runners from Run Together. She's used to the shorter distances, and so she'll she'll know that while she has the strength in climbing, the longer this race goes on, it will start to favour the other runners. And you know we saw from Sophia the the lead she had in Mont Blanc mm. was so big over mm. the others, and because we didn't have Nienka there, it, it was ve or, or Ali M M McLaughlin there, it was very hard to get a sense of how 
well, good that run let's was. talk about the, those big hitters then. Nienke, the, the the Dutch athlete that we really expected to be to be leading the way. She's we, we don't really know what's happened to her. She's not in the top eight at the moment. Um, but you know, with Sophia coming through, we in now second, we do expect her to probably catch Monica Madalena Floria. I mean, we and don't does, know. Does this look just looking at the way Patrick's running? Does it look like I? D He's got a slight limp, mm. ever so slight limp. I, I was just thinking that, and his head's slightly down. And it does just look like, yeah, it does I, definitely look like that. If, if we, and, and I realise he is climbing here. You won't, you can't tell that, but he is going up a climb, so he will be slightly hunched. But this this doesn't look like the, bat, the body language I'd expect from Patrick at this stage. And, and when we come back to Philemon, we'll see... We'll see how he looks and we'll be able to compare, but it wouldn't surprise me if Philemon now starts to track him down. Um, and you know, there's still a lot of running left to go. We're still with our race leader here, Patrick Kepengino. He has a 30 second lead at the last checkpoint. Um, and I think that's now actually increased since that checkpoint. Um, Philemon is one minute four behind Patrick. So although maybe Philemon has been looking a bit smoother and, and Patrick, we thought maybe was tiring a little, just looked like he was limping slightly. He has got a one minute four lead, which is quite substantial. And actually, Patrick doesn't look like he's got a limp <laughs> now, does he? No, he so, doesn't. Uh, that certainly was the hill that maybe suggested he wasn't running with the, the, the form we would expected from him. Um, in third place is Kevin Ki uh, Kelvin Kibbit, which is quite a surprise. He, he's not actually on our list. So when I spoke to Thomas, who was the coach of Run Together, who to look out for, Kevin was the person he mentioned, who even when I was searching through our, our numbers, wasn't there earlier today. And I just want to say, yes, yeah, so for the men's at the moment, it's one, two, three, Kenya. They really yeah. are. They've turned up today. But the women's race, David. Now, men and women started at the same time today. And we've got the Romanian lady on our right, Madalena Monica Floria. And she is doing an awesome job. But can she hold up this, this, this lead? We didn't expect her to be there. Sophia Lackley looks very strong. But I have to say, they're both flying, aren't they? Yeah, they're looking very good. And the big question mark over Madalena is if whether she she has the, the stamina in a race like this to make it all the way through to the end. Um, but we were talking about the three Kenyan men there. A Kenyan man has never won Sierra Zanao. This will be huge. Joyce has won, um, it, Joyce, sorry, Lucy has won for Kenya in the past, but um, th this is a, a massive change in the, the hierarchy of running at this race. Um, yeah, and I mean, usually, um, are the are the Kenyan runners usually suited to longer distances? Do we usually see them compete on this thirty-one kilometer type course? Well, you you see a lot of marathon runners come into this course who are, are better at the long distances. So we've we've already talked about Hendrik Pfeiffer, we've talked about Vitaly Schaffer, but these Kenyan runners actually do specialise in the shorter distances. So they do a lot of um, mountain running across Europe. Those races tend to be more uphill tend to be around the 10k half marathon mark well le let's talk about um we've got the, the three kenyans in the top three places we have then got vitaly shafa in fourth we've then got julius kariba nigiri in fifth we've got xavier chevrier in sixth and remy bonnet the swiss man who we thought was going to probably take out the win here he was one of the favorites is in at seventh five minutes 17 seconds off the pace yeah and and these gaps are these back gaps are significant now we've talked about runners catching and um last year andre blanis was in around ninth place at this stage in the race but we don't think remy is the man to do that actually looking at it behind in eighth place roberto de lorenzo 523 but Elazine Elo, uh, El, Eloazi, he is in ninth, 540 down. He is the best descender on this course. He's running with Thibaut Baronian, who's come fourth here in the past. So while the places have some big gaps in them, we do expect those places to change. Probably not one and two. I think those two are battling it out for that place between them now. Yeah, I mean, we'd be surprised if anything changes between between, between Patrick and Philemon in, in the front, wouldn't we? 
but we, we do have a host of very fast downhillers coming. Eli Hemmings now come through in, in 11th place, 5.48. So that third place is, is where the battle is. We're talking about uh, Kevin Kibbert. He's someone who wasn't even on our roster at the beginning of the day, but um, the, the coach of Run Together knows him because he used to train with Patrick when he was younger. And while he hasn't raced and hasn't got the times that we can track in the same way, they know he has the ability that Patrick does. So he's only three minutes down at the moment in third, and he can be, he is chasing them down. And let's talk a bit about, about the, the, the race. We, we said it's steeped in history. This is the, the 50th anniversary. So that's maybe why we've had more runners than ever take part. And, and it's not just the elite runners. We've got 6,500 runners overall. They started at 4.45 a.m. this morning. And I just want to say the course record in for the men's is at two hours 25 minutes 35 seconds held by Killian Jordan who is hopefully going to be joining there us goes. shortly um, which will be fab to talk to him about his experience unfortunately he's not racing here today because he's injured but for the women the the record time is two hours 49 minutes and 20 seconds and here we are we are back with the first women but I have to say that that Monica Floria is looking a little bit more tired than she was earlier naturally we, we are we are almost halfway through the race um, for okay. the women but but you're just thinking, Sophia, oh yeah, she's taking on some, some nutrition, some liquid there. Um, and I, I, wanna, I wanna talk to you, Th this race, we're in Europe now, but we're gonna be going to America um, next month. Why are the Golden Trail World Series uh, races, you know, why do we have them in Europe and, and the USA? We're trying to piece together the best trail races in the world. And we're heading to Pikes Peak next, the Pikes Peak Ascent. And that has been going for 40, 50 years as well. It's, it's a super hard race where the best runners in the world tended to be anyway. And mm. so we, 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 the, the intent is to try and test these runners. Over, and, oh, this is nice to see. You can see the teammates here. I think this is, this is Joyce. Um, Joyce is helping out um, Fillory. So Joyce is very, very good runner. She's been, she um, won Theon Dixon last week um, in a very good time. And she's clearly realized that Philarese is struggling a bit mm. here. Um, they used to be teammates. Um, well, yeah, you can see they were just sharing some sort of nutritional liquid there. I mean, that's very friendly behavior, isn't it? Super friendly. So they've actually changed teams. It, so um, Joyce used to be with Run Together. She's now moved. And Philarese has joined um, Run Together. So it just shows you the, comp the, the companionship on in trail running. Let's talk about Sierra as a town. With its population of 17,000, it's located 500 meters above sea level and renowned for its 300 day a year of average sun, gifting it with the nickname Sunshine City. Boasting a Mediterranean mountain climate, the Sierra Terra provides ideal conditions for cultivating grapes. The local population beats to the rhythm of more than 1,200 hectares of vineyards that cover the Sierra region. The year's prime focus is the grape harvest in September and October. In a joyous, friendly atmosphere, friends, families, amateurs and professional wine growers all pitch in and Sierra's history is closely entwined with the Val d'Anivia history. At the time, the Anivia locals migrated to the plains several times a year to work in the vineyards and the, this multi-annual migration has a special name, Riddling. Entire villages moved with their children, the parish priest, school teacher and livestock forming heavily loaded lines on, and, and, on, and they, they just moved with everything on the paths and this traditional lifestyle happens to be the roots of this amazing Sierra Zanel race. I love just seeing the cyclists there having to cut the trail. So we're behind Joyce and Jiru here, who and is um, one, of our, one of our favorites actually to start tracking them down. And I just want to talk about, about the cameras we have here, but at the Golden Trail World Series, it is filmed in such an amazing, unique way. Um, because basically instead of motorcycles, we've got runners and, and cyclists following them with cameras. And it's just sensational footage. Now, one of, one of the camera cyclists is actually a former Olympic mountain biking champion. That's the, the quality. That's the caliber we we've got here at the yeah. Golden Trail World Series, isn't it? Not just, not just the runners, but even our cameramen. Yeah, and, and they, they, they've come early, they've cycled the whole course, so they get a sense of, of where it is. Um, but it's challenging for them as well, because they'll, we have three cyclists 
for men and three cyclists for women. So the intention is we can always be seeing first, second and third place. And you can see that Madalina is, is reaching back repeatedly to get her drink. She, she's aware of the, how important nutrition is. It, it seems that Fillerese, who was in second place and leading for a short time on the climb, she's struggling, um, and which is why I think Joyce has probably tried to help her out. So we, we've got our top 10 um, at the, the hour mark that came through Ponchette. And um, we, we've heard that Sophia Lockley is actually just 50 meters behind our first runner here of Monica Madalina Floria. So Sophia Lockley, is it going to be her day again? Um, I mean, it, we it could be. But oh God, while we've talked here about Nienka and Ali, they're not too far behind. They're about two minutes behind. So Nienka's speed, if she can refine her form, it's not over yet. Um, Gosh, well, they've like, they're talking about Nienka, then she's she's really stepped it up, hasn't she? Because they, they, they were they were further behind that, and then we've got Ali Mack, fellow USA athlete, to Sophia Luckley, and, and we haven't seen her yet this year in the in the Golden Trail, but she finished spectacularly last year in the finale, didn't she, of the Golden Trail World Series? Yeah, she she won two races against Nienka. She um, in, in the autumn of last year, she was the the virtual kilometer world champion. But Joyce is the person who wasn't even in our top 10 because we weren't sure if she was coming. She's changed teams. Yesterday, she was super confident coming into this. And, and last weekend, she won Theon Dixon. Um, the, 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 the other aspect between these two is she is the faster downhill runner between um, Fillerice and, and her. We don't know about Sophia because neither of these two have really been tested that much technically. The fact that Sophia's done a lot of trail in the, the Madeira finals will hopefully suit her, but Joyce could potentially be tracking down Sophia as well. And, and, and Monica started off very quickly, very fast. Um, and the question will be, once she's overtaken, it can really affect your confidence. I mean, talk to me about Sophia. She, she, she's a Nordic skier. Why is she so good at running, David? I mean, it, this is part of the, the, the question that having incredible lungs is can transition. So we've seen with Remy Bonnet, he does a lot of schemo. We know Kylian Journet has done schemo in the past as well. And it allows you to train, similar to cycling, at a huge um, quantity of mileage without being limited by the destruction that running has on your legs. The challenge, though, is transitioning to these distances. And yesterday, Sophia said, if it was just ultra races in trail, she wouldn't be able to do it because she wouldn't be. And here we, this is the overtake. Yeah. Wow. Let's see if they look at each other. Yeah, I mean, you just saw the Romanian just glance at Sophia and you could just sense, oof, yeah. she's gone. And so, I mean, it did look as if Sophia picked up her pace a little bit. What you try and do strategically when you overtake is to blast past your opposition. You want them to think you are un invincible. You try and smile, you try and look as relaxed as possible. And that is what Sophia just did. And you could see she did just put on the gas and also it really helps that there's a lot of fans there to boost her on, no? Yeah, I mean, this, this could be a trap in some ways. You've picked up your pace for the overtake. You then get the energy coming through and that adrenaline can force you into a, a pace that is slightly too fast. So she needs to try and maintain control. You see she's got the pick up there with some water. Um, she needs to try and keep her cool, literally, but actually not get carried. I mean, look at the gap behind. Mm. There was, it, at least 20 meters in that short section. She's... This could be a change of pace, it just because it, it could be that it's just too demoralizing to be overtaken. And she is overtaking loads of men as she goes as well. You can see the wonderful Swiss flags on the mountainside. And I have to say that the Swiss have come out in their hundreds, if not thousands, I think, today to support these runners. And it really is a beautiful place to have a race like this. And Sophia, luckily, it's it's great to see. And here's Joyce, I believe, in, um, well, she's probably in third, catching, yeah. catching on second. Third place at the moment. We can't see that that transition that age station ahead of her yet which suggests there is still a, a little bit of a gap for her to try and catch up but if you're Sophia now she'll all she'll be thinking about is just stay calm stay calm and she, at the back of her mind she'll be thinking where is Dinka yeah yeah and I, I what I want to talk about as well David is that we're following both men and women here at Golden Trail World Series and what I love about this series is that 
it's equal prize money for both men and women. There's equal kind of emphasis put on on both both genders, and that is just so important when it comes to this. And it just really, it really just you know that the women's field today is so exciting, and it's just absolutely as it should be that both receive the equal amount of prize money. And I just love what Golden Trout are doing. And if they if they get the record, which is not looking like they will do today, five thousand Swiss francs extra, but. Anyone who finishes with a fast time actually wins prize money here. It's not just the top 10 that get prize money for the Golden Trail. The Sierras are now, because they, they focus so much on time, that you can go home with 200, 400 francs, even if you're not in the top 20, if you've run fast enough. And certainly Sophia is doing that today. Absolutely. And it's, it's not just the prize money um, that's equal like the, 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 they set off at the same time today and if you're in the top 10 of the men or the women for the Golden Trail World Series you get invited to the next race and you get your expenses paid for don't you and to, to be able to compete in the next race and I just think that's brilliant and we saw Nienke appear two years ago first race in Golden Trail join the series she's going to be motoring now so all is to play for And Nienke, actually, we, we talked a bit about it before. She was, during lockdown, she couldn't do hockey. She started to train. And then she, her first marathon was insane. Sub 245 as her first marathon in lockdown. She then came, she'd won the Zermatt Marathon. You know, a well-known marathon, but not a global marathon. And she suddenly appeared in second place behind Maud, um, coming out at that first transition aid station, Chandelin, in second place. And, uh, and, and here's the overtake. Mm. Wow, Joyce has overtaken as well. You've got to hope for Madalena that this isn't going to be a, a, a death march to the line because we, we so often see runners who start too quickly and then in the heat start to fade. And it's so far from home still. It's 15 kilometers, which seems like halfway, but um, with if you're feeling tired, this is going to be super tough for her mentally to try and, and just stay positive to stay fluid but you've got to hope that she can hang on for a top five we've seen runners here before um people like el Hassin and even remy at this plate you know drop out of the top 10 from being from leading at this stage so it, it can happen because the second half is so much faster than the first but monica madalina flori who, who has led us for you know basically the first hour and, and a half of this race you know she is she is more of a short distance runner so if she can lead for the first part but then cling on to a top 10 finish then that might be what she's after and and that might have been her her race plan if she knows she can do that in the first bit instead of trying to claw it back later then it might work for her yeah you know? and if if you, if you top 10 here, not only do you get the prize money, but you are invited to come to Pikes Peak in America, which is a pretty sweet deal. So this could be a top 10 could actually open up the whole world of, of exposure to, the, to more sponsors and then being in the series. And so, as you say, it, it's, it's hard to, to focus on the fact you're losing first, but if she could stay strong, this could still be a launch pad for her in the future. But we're back with our first man. This is like Patrick Still. He's uh, he's he's looking nice and bouncy. This is this is strong running up this hill at this stage. Absolutely, and those views, David. I mean. You don't get much better than this, do you? This is why I love trail running. This, this, I know you're a London boy, David, but, <laughs> but I am all about the mountains and the trails and I would spend all day here. Definitely beats the, the streets of Peckham, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, you can see around, we've, we've got the, um, the Matterhorn in the distance. There's, there's, there's five massive mountains here that you can take on board. This is, from this point on in the race though, there is no shade. It's, it's absolutely brutal because the race starts so late. We're coming up to a quarter to one now. And so the heat will be absolutely bearing down on them. And this can start to really drain people. We do know that there are some faster runners coming behind them. There's a significant gap now. So um, you'd imagine Patrick is only thinking about Philemon, his compatriot. He knows he's, he's faster over the descents. Um, speaking to some of their uh, colleagues yesterday, they were saying that they think Patrick might need up to a two-minute gap 
at the downhill to be able to lead uh, at the finish against Philemon. So um, Patrick is going to be working hard to try and build that gap in the knowledge that if he doesn't, he could still lose that. But it, we're back with Joyce, who is, is our second woman. She's looking very fluid there, um, um, as, as is Sophia. And look at the pace of them too. It's incredible to see. And the pace that these women are going, Sophia Luckley looks so confident in first place. And she is followed by Joyce, who looks super comfortable as well, doesn't she? And that's, that's, that's Jean Marguerite she's overtaking, I think, from, um, from Los Sportiva. He's come, he's won a Golden Trail race in the past um, in, uh, in the Skyrun. And, and so this just shows you the level that she's running at. To be, to, to be beating one of the previous male champions is incredible. So this is the battle now, if, if, you've, uh, if you're just tuning in. This is Joyce Njiru, who she wasn't on our starting lineup. We, we weren't sure that she was gonna be here, but she is the on-form athlete from mountain running. And um, she knows she's a good descender. She's very fast across the top. And the real battle is between her and Sophia Lockley in first place. They don't know each other at all. They've never raced head to head and neither of them are known for running long distances. We saw um, Sophia ran Mont Blanc Marathon, her first ever marathon, and managed to get her nutrition right, which is a question mark over her. Joyce isn't used to this distance as much either. And so they're both running very fluidly now. What we're gonna be looking out for in the next half an hour or so is if they change their body language slightly or if they, they they lose their pace because that will really determine who is going to win this race and i just want to talk a little bit more about the history of this amazing race so sierra now an a to b race starts in the sunny town of sierra and then ends in zanau which is where we are based at the finish line it's, it's also called the race of the five four thousand meter peaks because there are five massive peaks as you can imagine in this race and it just really is something special this is a bit of a crowning glory in terms of of trail running 31 kilometers and it really is quite exceptional and we, we spoke a little bit about it earlier david but for those who are who are maybe just tuning in that the golden trail world series is there's six races in the calendar we start in europe started in may this is the last one in europe before we go to america for two races um next month and then the final is in Italy in October and it's equal prize money for both men and women and if you end in the top 10 uh, out of the men or the women you're invited all expenses paid to be part of the next race so there really is incentive and it's just such a team to be a part of such an evolution in trail running these kind of slightly shorter trail running events than what people might know of, of ultras etc all of these races are, are between about 20 and 42 kilometers so that's between your half marathon and your marathon pace and they are going to some of the most exceptional places around the world to build the love of trail running to build one of the best trail running shows in the world and we're just loving it i mean what great tv this is those views these athletes are just exceptional and, and we do know that patrick uh, kibangida he will be coming to america next and so this is his first race in the golden trail but he is someone who everyone will be looking out for aware that he can really challenge for the overall title and uh, Sophia Lockley as well. She's already won Mont Blanc. She came second with COVID in, uh, she came second with COVID in the Dolomis run. And she is gonna be leading our series, but we now have a special guest for you, talking about someone who's led the series and someone who knows this race extremely well. Sophia, as we said, had COVID in her last race. The last person who had COVID at Sierra's now is now joining us. It's not what he's best known for, but Kilijone, nine wins here. How does it feel to be back not racing? Well, it, it, it feels like I'm less tired than racing. Uh, it's, it's nice to be here. It's, it's an amazing race. It's a, it's a great atmosphere. And, and it's, uh, I'm so like just thrilled to follow the race. It's so close in the men and the woman. They are like, yeah, I think we will have a, a, such a nice ending of the race. Yeah, I mean, what, we were expecting Remy to be um, challenging probably more strongly on the hills and, and to be able to keep pace a little bit better than he has. What's your kind of reading of the race at the moment? Do you, do you think he's 
going to be dropping a little bit or do you think he's still should we still watch out for him to potentially come back well i think uh i i, I thought at the beginning that the the two men today that would be strongest would be patrick and and remy and uh we saw remy was very strong in the first uphill uh, maybe he was i think in this race like small difference uh, he, in the first half he like, can make big difference at the end mm. so maybe just forcing a bit more then like uh you are not able to to roll up in the flat and and, and then you are just too tired so i think remy even i if maybe also like it was a bit of pressure for for him because like 50 years uh, in switzerland it's a race where mm. he has been performing very well but uh, never really expressed his full potential and maybe that and, and the rhythm of uh, of uh, Patrick in the first half he was really really fast so I think that maybe he was forcing a bit more and then it was hard to 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 follow up but uh, yeah Patrick uh, uh, we see him now like uh, rolling in the last part Super behind strong. the yard close so it will be I think interesting to the to the end not with Remy but uh, with uh, with Philemon that uh, he's doing also an amazing race and Killian, you you've won this nine times here. What what does it take to do that? Like, do you just love it? Why is this race special to you? Um, because I hate it. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like it. it's one of the most amazing places on earth. Like at the Valle d'Anivier, it's it's just like wonderful. The, the race is called the race of the four, uh, the five four thousands. Because when you are running in the in the part where are they running now in these sections you can see uh, some of the most uh, spectacular mountains in the Alps with Matterhorn, with Weisshorn, Pont de Sinal, Obergabelhorn, Den Blanche. Those mountains are just like massives uh, of, of ice and rock and it's just beautiful. And then you are racing on these like uh, flat trails and dirt roads and, and you are just suffering and it's just like, I hate the effort because you need to really, really push, but the place is just so wonderful. You just said you're just suffering. So do you think some of these runners right now are just suffering? Are they just hanging on? Oh, it's so hard at this point. Like they are going up after Hotel Wayscore. So they have more than uh, like 15K in the legs, uh, almost 20K. And, and it's just like so hard. It's one race that from the, from the gang, like from the first minute till the finish, you don't have any second of rest. So that's uh, just an effort that it's it's insane, especially like after the first uphill where like the muscles, they need to work so, so much that it's so, so hard after to, to start rolling and to try to run fast. But this last section though, I mean, last year you overtook Philemon and um, we're going to find out in a few seconds what you think of the, the rest of the race, because that is where it can really change. So we, we know that this, this last third of the race is, is incredibly steep. We've seen in the past, Philemon fell, he lost places. The race has changed significantly previously. Andreas Bl Andre Blanis actually overtook everyone in this last third. What can we expect to happen, do you think? What does it feel like for these runners and what are the challenges for them now? Yes, it, it seems that it's, uh, it's finished or that the difference is made, but in this race, the last 10K and the, especially the last three kilometers are, are key and uh, we saw last year how it changed like Andreu was far behind in the uphill and he just like crushed everyone on these last 10 kilometers and uh, we see how like now uh, runners like Ivo Baronien, uh, Xavier Sevrier, Roberto De Lorenzi that they are a bit back they are like five minutes uh, after the, the leaders but these last kilometers if uh, Patrick, if uh, Philemon they start to, to crash uh they they can easily lose this uh these three four five minutes so uh they and look at this yeah. this is an overtake coming oh is this is this it looks like oh it, wow yeah. this is philemon against patch and we we thought he might catch him on the downhill but actually philemon is is clearly the stronger runner here and and this is significant because we know that patrick can't descend quite as well as philemon um, this is a changing of the guard. It's Philemon's 21st birthday today. I know, what wow, a win what that a would nice. be. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing, yeah. He's, he's like, we see the runners, they are, it's so beautiful to, to look at them running. It's so, the, it's so aesthetic and it's, it's beautiful to see them. And uh, it will be hard now for Patrick to keep, uh, to keep on, on, uh, on Philemon. And, mm, stay and, positive. Yeah, 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 I think it's hard when you get overtake, probably he will, he will try to follow. But we know that Philemon, like, uh, yeah, he's, he's a better downhill runner. And Killian, I want to ask you about you. How are you doing? How's your injury? 
Well, I'm, I'm, I'm doing fine sitting here, uh, I would say, but uh, yeah, one of the big goals was uh, to be here at, at Sursinal, but unfortunately, like uh, I just uh, three weeks ago, I, I got a, a bone edema in the sacrum, so like I, I need to take some 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 rest. And uh, yeah, it's, it's part of the sport, it's also to, you push the, your body to the limits, but uh, yeah, sometimes that means that uh, you, you get injured. But and you have to you have to take the rest when you need it, and it's about longevity, isn't it? You want to be ready for the next race. You want to, you want to repair. You want to recover. Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, the goal is to to be healthy first, to be able to perform, and that means that uh, when uh, you are not hundred percent, it's important to prioritize uh, recovery. But but ten is a lovely number, isn't it? It's a, 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 a much nicer number than nine. Like watching this now and seeing these new challenges, which last year we were hoping for you battling these two. Does this does this build hunger in you do you want to come back here more and, and, and get that 10th well I, I don't think that or yeah I, I would lie if I say that it doesn't matter at all but yeah like I think seriously nice race that they love to come back and and like now seeing the runner racing like uh, it's uh it's it's nice to 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 start being motivated for for next year all about that motivation Killian absolutely and um, and who are there any other people that you'd, you expect us to uh, kind of see in the future coming through at, at these races that we might not have heard of before? Or any kind of tips for these runners? Anyone who uh, is aspiring to be a trail runner? Well, I think it's a uh, it's a beautiful sport. It's it's nice. It's it's uh, like the connection with nature that you have. It's it's just uh, unique. Uh, but I think first it's is to. To, to take it with respect on the way that uh, you need to, to train uh, to be to be there, but also you need to learn like that you are in a mountain environment that you need to to learn that uh, you are even if you are in a race you are kind of alone there. So you need to to learn the technique. You need to learn how to navigate into in in the rocks or in bad weather. So like to to always approach with respect the the mountains to mm. to get think first that you are in the mountains and then that you are racing. Um, and then, like, uh, just like uh, to enjoy it, to, to don't think about performance, to just like uh, go for the pleasure. And I think motivation is the key to to progress. This is a great tactic to tell your competitors not to think about performance, only so that you can then take that advantage over them. And um, and in terms of because I I now hear people who are telling me about the way they train. And it's actually tips that I know have come from someone from you. Are you, are you picking this up that your your trade secrets are just becoming better known and now actually enabling that next generation? Yeah, well, I think it's uh, first is that it's not big secrets. I think uh, like uh, if you want to perform well, it's very simple. It's uh, it's just to train a lot, train smart, recover well and to commit to, to this lifestyle. Uh, and it's very simple, but it's, uh, it's not easy to make because that means that you need to be 24 seven, like thinking out, uh, about sport, about performance, how you eat, how you, how you train, how, to, how you recover. Uh, and, and then it's more like on the technique and it's always like small tips, improvements that you can do. But I would say the, the biggest secret is that, uh, that it's just like uh, everything, like the lifestyle of, uh, of, of an athlete, it takes 24 seven and you need to commit mm. to that. Mm. And, and, and where can we expect to see you next? Well, like uh, the, my plan after Sears in was to go to UTMB and I don't know yet actually if I will be able to run, it's only two weeks from now and I still like uh, have a bit of pain. So I will decide in the next, uh, yeah, well, it's two weeks to the race. So in the next week I will decide it kind of. <laughs> I, I want to ask you something, Killian. You said all about respecting the mountains, and I know you're an environmentalist. I'm an environmentalist too. And how how have you seen these landscapes, these mountains change throughout your your time as a as an elite trail runner? Yes, we are seeing here in in this Valle d'Anniversi. It's, it's a valley with a lot of glaciers. Uh, it's glaciers all around this uh, Couronne Imperial, and we've been seeing like uh, my first participation in Sears in was 2009. And uh, in those years, we see that these glaciers are just uh, disappearing very, very fast. I think the, the provision is that at the end of the century in the Alps, it would be uh, less than the 20% of the glaciers that they are now. Uh, we are seeing also that uh, the ecosystems are just getting higher so that the, the species of animals and plants, they need to go higher in the mountain because it's getting drier, it's getting warmer. So we are seeing all these changes and it's also like, uh, our responsibility, I think, first, the ones that we go to 
to the mountains to it's 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 not our playground even if we play there it's also like uh the the home for many species mm -hmm. and we yeah we need to preserve and i think yeah. in races to also acknowledge that absolutely and we need to respect the mountains but we need to protect them to enable this to carry on happening um and we know that that's so important across all of these trails we see and basically we, we love the work you're doing and, and helping to preserve these Now we've just had an update that Thibaut Baronian is up to fifth place. We, we were, we've been talking already about the impact that the, sec, the, the last third of those downhills can have. How many minutes would you say a really strong um, downhill runner can catch over those last 7K or so? Yeah, we see Thibaut that he, he's flying to the front and I think like uh, four or five minutes is possible to, to catch it here. So uh, yeah, these, uh, these many front, uh, Philemon, Patrick, uh, uh, Kevin, they they might look behind. They they might see uh, maybe Thibaut uh, flying, uh, passing. Uh, even if we see, like, I think uh, uh, Philemon is uh, really running strong. But uh, Patrick, we see here that uh, he's, uh, we see that he's not as, mm. as um, a fluid. fluid. Yeah. So, uh, so Thibaut, I'm, I'm sure that he's just chasing, trying to chase behind. And even third place, like Kevin is, mm absolutely flying here and uh, he, he was someone who wasn't even on the list of people oui, running today um, is that something that can when you're racing are you always thinking about the unknown runner or is, is that at the back of your mind yeah it, it happens and that's that's the beauty of the sport of, of open races i think one of the beautiful things of our running is that the races are open mm. so like you can if you want to participate like a uh, 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 you need to, to get the entry in that, but it's open to everyone that wants, and, and these uh, surprises can happen. And it's, it's the beauty of the sport to see someone that uh, maybe you didn't know that uh, goes and, and, and just like uh, do a, a good result and, and can win the race. And they really are going so fast. I mean, just to give people at home a bit of context around running like 20 kilometers per hour, you're looking at just over an hour for a half marathon time. It really is fast. Killian, which part of the race did you enjoy the most? I know you said there was suffering, but which, which did you think, oh, this is quite fun? Well, I think the, the part where we just saw uh, uh, some minutes ago uh, that uh, the, the first were passing, that it's this nice rolling trail with some rocks. That's I think the, the most beautiful uh, part of the race for me is just like, and even if you are able to look the head up, it's just, it's beautiful. Probably in the race, you don't look, see much, but, uh, but it's very nice, uh, this, uh, this part, and it's very playful also. Now this is saying second woman for Sophia, which if that is true, that means Joyce Nigeri has overtaken. We've not actually had confirmation of that. We're, we're checking this now. Oh no, back to first woman. Okay, <laughs> a typo there. I was going to say, but you can see how steep these climbs are. Like how, when you've, when you've run so far already and you've had to pick up the pace across the top, do, do these climbs feel significantly different to that first climb? Absolutely. Here, these small climbs, they, you are just so tired from on the legs from from all the first climb and the and the and the downhills there's more flat that when it comes even if it's only like 10 20 meters of uphill the legs are are just like uh, hurting so I, it feels much much harder than than the previous ones and we saw in the woman it, it was like very very close i think the woman race will be just uh yeah, very, very interesting till the till the finish. Especially if we don't actually know who's a faster downhiller out of Sophia and Joyce. And um, and in those times when you are, um, it, it does hurt. What what are you thinking? What do you tell yourself? Well, uh, I just think, okay, it's better you go fast to finish faster to finish uh, earlier. So uh, it's just like about like uh, about getting to the finish line and just saying, okay, it's just the quicker I go, the the quicker I will resting. <laughs> I think there's a lesson for us all there. And but this is Joyce who is tracking back.
Yeah. So Joyce is here in second. She's not looking, well, it's, it's actually quite hard to tell because we saw a side profile of Sophia. And Joyce is still moving fluidly, but they, they clearly are very close. Only 44 seconds between them, which is nothing on a course like this. Yeah, um, we, we love to see that. We love to see that. And um, Killian, I, I want to know, what goes through your head? You know, you said there was some fun bits, but like, do you have a, a song playing ever in there? Like, what's going on in the, side, in the head of Killian Jornet? I think when you are in a race, you are thinking, okay, I just push. And it's, if you are suffering, it's like, okay, you, you lie to yourself. You say, okay, I just push to, till the next day the station and there I, I stop or I rest. And it's like, when you are there, getting there, it's like, okay, no, ne go to the next one, go to the next one. So it's always the next landmark. It's like yeah. always the small wins, the next person, the next aid station, right. Yeah, you cannot think like to the finish line. It's always too far. It's always like, yeah, too hard to think about that, but just like a small, Small goals through the race, and then you get uh, eventually to the finish. And and where's where's the line on knowing when to stop? Because I mean, you raced this last year with with, with COVID without realising it. You did UTMB. You won UTMB still in the midst of um, of COVID. Um, there must have been moments in that where you thought this feels different to. I've never been feeling like this in a race. Like, how did you know it was the right thing to continue? Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's different. Like if you are probably top athlete or 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 not, like that you know better. Like what are your limits and and how much you can push. But uh, for me, it's mostly think okay if I if I can get injured or or if I can get uh, a bigger injury, that is uh, is no way to to continue. If it's just like a, a bit more suffering, that's that's okay. I would say, uh, but it's 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 a fine line. It's a very fine line to know when it's like that you are just pushing through the suffering and when you are just like uh, getting uh, getting an injury. And then, and which was a sweeter win? The first or the record? Um, well, the first one is always very special because it's, it's new, it's something that you have been dreaming like uh, for long, it's something that you don't expect. But uh, also the record was very special because it was a year that I, I prepared it very well. And uh, and, and yeah, it's, it's all, I think for me the what I'm most proud is that it's been more than 10 years since the first victory and I'm still fighting. So I think that's the, like, that, uh, that yeah, year after year, I can still, like, enjoying the, the yeah, the, the, the performance and pushing. And so do we think we're going to see you back then next year, Kylian Jordi, to do, to do this one again and maybe get the 10th? Uh, well, I, I've been racing here 12 times uh, over the past, like, maybe 15 years. So, like, yeah, it's a big chance that I will be here. Like, I, it's a race I love. It's a race that it's uh, it's wonderful, and you always want to to come back to to Sherzinal. Well, we love seeing you race it, so we do hope to see you back here next year. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, I'm looking forward to that tenth victory, which uh, I think we all know is, is is reasonably likely if he can just put a good bit of training without being injured. Thank you so much for joining us, Killian, and good luck with UTMB if you have the chance to race it. Yeah, thank you very much, and it will be so exciting to to see these, uh, these last kilometers. So yeah, can, can't wait to be sharing on them. And who are you cheering on? Well, uh, now to everyone, like I think all the runners deserve the, the credit and deserve like the, the effort they are putting on. Ah, oh, same thing you commit to someone. Thank you so much, Killian. <laughs> Thank you, Killian. <laughs> Have a great day. We will see you later. And gosh, this race is just getting better and better. Joyce here is looking really strong, isn't she, David? And, and if we try and look ahead here, she was only 44 seconds down. If she starts to see a Sophia in the distance, that is going to give us so much hope. And Joyce came into this very confident on her downhill skills. The fact that she doesn't know how Sophia will run on those will be... Um, Will intrigue her, but th there's, there's no question in the men's at the moment. Philemon is absolutely flying through. We knew he'd be fastest over the top. He's he's a very good descender, but the big question was whether he'd be overtaking Patrick, and he already has. In terms of times, they're about two minutes down on the course record, which is mm. extremely quickly. It's extremely quick. Over the last five years, we haven't seen anyone close to that kind of pace. So it, it just shows you the level of competition they've got here. The big question of the men's, though, we thought it was going to be a battle between Patrick, Remy, and Philemon, but actually, um, Kelvin Kirui is a, a relatively new runner who used to train with Patrick when they were young, as children. He's not raced as much in Europe, but he is the runner in black we will see, and he looks extremely fast right now, and it wouldn't surprise me if he is the person who is going to be challenging Philemon. 
Fluor now, he, he, he looks like he's, he's held back a little bit. He's, he's lost his fluidity. He's, this is downhill running now. So, um, well, yeah, let's, let's talk. I mean, for people who might have just joined us, I mean, you are looking at the rolling hills and mountains of Switzerland. Started in Sierra, ending in Zanau. 31 kilometers. Oh, they're having to, having to overtake just walkers on this course. And it is a course of three parts, isn't it, David? And we are now into the, into the final and third part. Yeah, and if you've, if you've run too hard and you have tired legs, it's incredibly hard to attack the down. It's the difference between putting your body weight forward, flowing through with the mountain and sitting back. And if you sit back, it breaks on your legs, but it also sends that force through your muscles. It's incredibly painful. And so when we see the start of the descent, which is coming up shortly, we'll get a really good steer of who actually is in a chance, in a good position of winning this race and who isn't. Because at the moment, it's a battle between Philemon and Kelvin. Zinal Village is 1,670 meters above sea level at the top end of Val de Anivers, nestled in an alpine settling where several summits rise to up to 4,000 meters. After walking for several hours from Place de Lely, you can access four refuges. As you can see here, the beauty of the refuges in front of us. After walking for several hours from the, uh, the refuges, known as mountain huts, you depart for the climbing point of the several summits. Petit Montlet is a two hour walk from Zanau where it takes around five hours to reach the Arpitez, Grand Mountainet and Trasuit mountain huts. The Weisshorn, Zinalat Hot Horn, Obal Gabenhorn, Matterhorn and Denton Blanche. These five 4,000 meter summits from the Imperial Crown, it dominates the Val d'Anivers and is an integral part of the Anivers people's DNA. We're back at the race though, and this is our, our it's a second man, I, I don't think that is true. Um, I think this probably is our, our race leader, because uh, unless this is back with Patrick this now. This is Patrick, this is Patrick, so this is our second man, and he's still looking strong, and he is the older of the two by quite a few years, so this could be the changing of the guard. We said it, we said it before, but it would be something special to see Philemon, who's 21 today, a uh, fellow Kenyan athlete, from the Run Together team who's been training. They've been training in Austria, not far away. Um, to see him take the win over Patrick today would be something quite special, but we've still got quite a lot of this race to go. So we just need to wait and see what happens. And you just wonder like, are they thinking about each other here? Are they thinking how far they are? I mean, you can see on the right hand side of the screen, all the hikers or, or actually some of those are runners who've already, amateur runners who started early this morning from 4.45 in the morning, who are now on the course, maybe watching, or maybe they are actually, they, they're, they're just, you know, waiting. They're taking a bit of a break themselves. They started, but they're gonna probably take about seven, eight hours to complete this course in comparison to the to the two hours something these athletes And you can, you can see how mountain bikers struggling now because this is the, the real battle on the descent. It get, starts to get rocky. It increases the gradient of downhill. And that is where you could see there, oh, please, please, can the, please can the walkers stay out of the way? Uh, Patrick ran into someone there, but you, it, it's very hard to actually find the right positioning on these turns as the gradient increases. And this is where Philemon is actually, this suits him better than it does Patrick. The big question now though, is someone like Thibaut Baronian, he's come fourth here in the past, He's never actually podiums, but we know from Golden Trail, he came third overall in the series. He's an incredibly good descender. And in the, the Golden Trail series finals two years ago, it was on the final downhill that he attacked to overtake Stian Ungermund and uh, come second in that race. So we know he's someone who has the ability to, to, to run these technical trails. He's actually training for ultras this year. So. We weren't sure if he was going to have the pace to be in and amongst it, but he's clearly sat back knowing that he's, he's got the distance in his legs. So at the moment, while we're looking at these two runners, the big question is whether the, uh, the, the faster downhill descenders can stop.
start to eat into those minutes. Killian said five minutes is possible and they're less than five minutes behind. Gosh, that would be something to see. And I, I just want to wanna talk about, David, about how the Golden Trail World Series works. So you basically, we've spoken about a top 10 of the overall rankings because this is the fourth race in in the series but those the, 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 those in the top 10 aren't necessarily our top runners here are they because not all runners race in every golden trail race and and you can see that the trail here is is quite smooth we've talked about how it suits the faster runners but already this season we've had some very technical runners this technical runs and that means they're very rocky very steep descents so We've had Zagama, a very wet marathon at the start of the season. And during that race, Manu Marias won there. And in the women's, Daniela Omus won as well. Daniela is here, but Manu has, has decided not to, to race because he knows that this trail doesn't suit him. And similarly with the Dolomis run, it's only a half marathon, supremely technical. So Judith Weider, she won, she won there. And um, we had Roberto De Lorenzo, who's chasing, come in second. Um, we had in third, Fred Tronchant, a orienteer who's technically gifted. And Elazine um, Elazoui from Morocco was the winner there. He is someone else who could be doing well here because he is fast and a powerful descender. But with the new runners in this race are the Kenyan runners who typically have been doing mountain running, which is not quite as technical, not quite as long, and they've appeared in full force. And we expect to see them joining us for the rest of the season. I mean, haven't they just, they've really, they've really put down the gauntlet today and they've, they've made a statement of intent with this performance so far. We haven't seen them much so far um, in this Golden Trail World Series. So it's really great to see that they've, 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 they've really targeted this race, haven't they? And, and just a reminder of people at home that if you are in the top 10, uh, finisher in this race, you will get all expenses paid and you'll be invited as an elite athlete to the America, the next American stop, won't they? Which is Pikes Peak or Mammoth. Yeah, in... Pikes Peak is yeah. next. Pikes Peak Ascent and it's it's incredible race, all uphill and um, 2,000 meters of climbing. But you, you can see the speed they've got here. We've, we've, we've had an update from the women's top 10 as they've come through um, Weisshorn, which is the just coming up to the start of the descent. So in first place still from America, is Sophia Lockley in, um, in fact, the, the times they've given us of the splits don't quite make sense unless it's one hour, um, two hours and 22. So we're, we'll ignore those splits. But in second place is Joyce DeJury, the, the Kenyan runner who we didn't know was gonna be here, but it was a, a, a favorite last year in this race. In third place in from Romania, Madalina Floria, she's holding on well. She looked like she could be dropping after they overtook her, but she, um, she, she's still running strongly. She is now a minute and 40 seconds down on second place. And behind her, a minute and 30 seconds is Filarese Kisang, once leader of the, of, the, uh, of the race. In fifth place is Nienke Brinkman. She's still in the running here. She's very, very fast, 220. Uh, 222 yeah. marathon. Sixth place, Emma Pooley from the UK. We've got in seventh place, Alice Gaggi, I think from Italy. Ali McLaughlin from America in eighth. Lucy Murigi, previous winner in ninth. And Miao Yao from China in 10th. That is our top 10 women. And amongst that, the big story, I guess, is, is whether Joyce can track down Sophia and if Ninka can use her pace to we know that Monica and Filaris are suffering and have been overtaking. So is there still a podium possibility for Nienke on the table? Absolutely. And, and, and in total in the Golden Trail World Series, we've got 38 different nationalities competing, which is huge and just so shows what kind of a, a global sport trail running is. Um, I've got a bit of a question about how the teams work. Uh, David, so you are our trail running expert here. You've been you've been taking me through it, like explaining how Golden Trail World Series all works. So each of these athletes will will be kind of you know assigned to a team or sponsored by a team. Yeah, and and sometimes it, it could just be there's a, a sponsoring company. So we will see here. We'll talk about Nike and Salomon and the various other teams. But we'll often find with um, different countries will potentially have a team as well. So there have been projects in the past to bring fast Kenyan runners into trail running. And, and that is what Run Together have done. 
um, Sky Running Kenya, the Milamese runners um, linked to, to On Running. And so they'll travel around in groups and we, we see something similar with Team Cedus Matrix from France. And it just allows you to train together and get that community to race together as well. But it does help in races like this to have a team or at least to be in a group of people because we, we mentioned when people were picking up their nutrition, not only do you have people who on the course can help you, but coming through and wow, look Ooh, at this. Oh my goodness. Look at him. I thought he was going to jump over that, <laughs> yeah. that log there. And, and interestingly, look, he's, he, that didn't unfaze him at all. He is a good downhill runner. And um, in fact, this is Patrick who yeah. um, he's... he's but if you look at the way he's shuffling there, he is not attacking this. He's sat back, he is breaking down this. And later, if they catch up enough, we'll see someone like Tebow running down this. And there, there's, there's where he's got more fluidity. Yeah. And if you sit back, all of the force of the gravity goes through your legs. And you can just see on the right-hand side that you saw, saw one of our camera runners. Anna Kufa. Yeah, yeah, she's fab. She's actually a bit of a runner herself, but she was following with a camera. And, and that's what's exceptional about Golden Trail Awards is we are getting footage that basically no other trail running event gets. We've got a professional mountain bikers following these runners. We have got professional runners following these runners with cameras to try and get the best footage ever. You can really see it. a bit of congestion on this course, isn't it? With either fans or, or amateurs runners who came out this morning who are still on the course this they've, they've still got a long way to go but actually we have got then we've got about uh how, how much how many oh the one men. kilometer yeah. left and and you you have to think wow we've been talking about um tebow coming through and uh, and runners like and, and actually it, it seems that the the, the leads the, the positions have changed somewhat as well um we've been giving some updates from the the last checkpoint and now Sylvan Kashad who last year was European uh, mountain running champion he is up into fourth place he's extremely fast as well but I don't think they're going to be catching with one kilometer out because look at the way Philemon is running here this is this is beautiful running at this stage in the race given how much he's had to put out there to try and reel in Patrick across the top of this mountain He's, he's running far more fluidly, uh, fluidly than, than Patrick. And the question is now um, whether Kevin Kibbutz can potentially track down Patrick. Sophia and Joyce, though, are a closer race and they have further to go yeah. until the finish. So the women's podiums are probably more up for, for grabs currently. Definitely. I mean, and, and Ali McLaughlin, we maybe expect her to be a bit higher up, but she wanted a top 10 and she's in seventh place. So that's pretty good. And anything can change as well. Her, her and Nyeke are sitting at sixth and seventh. But gosh, with just a kilometre to go or less than, it does mean that the course time for the men's is out of reach. That was Killian Jordan's course record at two hours, 25 minutes, 35 seconds. We are going to go over that by about, you know, four minutes or so. But wow, what a race this has been. Yeah, and, it, and it's an extremely fast time. For, for, for years, Killian was sat at around the, the 230 mark. And he just, it, Jonathan Wyatt's time of 229 was, um, it, it was around since 2003. That's how long it had been standing for. And, and, and Killian had tried and tried and tried. And this is the end of the race now coming. You go through that tunnel and you know you're gonna be hitting the, 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 the road soon. He's gonna to start to hear the roar of the crowds, the six and a half thousand people who've raced and their supporters are all in town. So he's going to have a sense the, the, the victory is in grass now. He, will he start to enjoy it? You'll see a change mm. in his body language when he knows, yeah, I've got it. But the, the, the streets are lined. People are ringing those Golden Trail World Series cowbells. He, he's coming in to the final stretch in and out, just 0.4 kilometers to go. Everyone is clapping their hands. We're getting excited here. There is such an atmosphere to see the first elite man bring it home for Kenya. And this is, and, and that's the thing. Kenya has never won in the men's field before. This is significant. They've talk, we've talked about how it is a road runners and a trail runners uh, race. And this, but this is the first time that we've seen people with the pace of Kenyan runners come and manage to hold on all the way through to the finish. He fell last year when he was in a good position, being overtaken by Petru and by Killian. But he's, he's clearly backed himself this time down those hills. And here is the finish line. 
he's going to take it. And no, he's not quite the finish line. I thought that arch was, but he, oh, he's enjoying this now. Look at his arms outstretched, taking in this moment for Kenya, taking this win home. And well, he absolutely deserves it on his 21st birthday. It's hey? his 21st and it's a fantastic time to finish. He wasn't the, the runner we were expecting to see necessarily finishing first place. We knew he had the ability. He's brought some fantastic race times into this race but the question mark was could he maintain this pace and boy has he 21 and king of the trail running world congratulations Philemon Ombogo you're the first Kenyan winner of Sierra's and now the 50th year we weren't expecting it to be you across you crossing this line what a performance we've seen. Absolutely. Run together, Kenya. They're going to be very proud of you. A bit of changing of the guard on your 21st birthday to take that mantle with Patrick coming in, it looks like, to be second. And wow, what a moment. I hope he enjoys this and soaks it up. But he's going to be waiting for his friend, Patrick. They train together. They, uh, they both are from, from Kenya together. And he did say yesterday, Philemon, he'd beaten Patrick in the World Championships and that gave him the confidence to attack. It was only after that he had the belief that he could be the number one runner from Run Together. And now it seems the number one runner in, in the world of trail running when it comes to Sierra's and now. So congratulations to Patrick Kipangino. He came second last year. He came with an injury. You can see it on his right knee and he's managed to fight on a superb performance from him and a great time. Mm. One and two for Kenya so far. Will it be one, two and three? That is the big question. Complete domination. But yeah, all sub 230, which on this course is quite exceptional, isn't it? And the finish line, look at that, compatriots. Oh, he needs a bit of a sit down. I don't blame you, Patrick. I don't blame you at all. And, and part of that is the energy that Philemon gets from winning is not going to Patrick. He's been suffering from early on. And you could see from the moment Philemon caught him and, and, and maybe slightly before he was struggling. We, we did wonder whether he was taking on enough nutrition and uh, he's clearly given everything in this race. He, he knew the person ahead of him. He actually knew the person coming up behind him. And this is our third place. Wow. This is Sylvain Cachard. Um, wow. For the overtake. He's... The, um, it, it looks as if um, Ke uh, Kevin is, is, is struggling here, potentially with cramp. But Sylvain Cachard is a very good mountain runner. He's yet to perform well on the Golden Trail. And he, he, he said, actually, he was injured this earlier this season. I was speaking to him at lunch yesterday, but he felt that he'd taken enough time off and was ready to come perform, perform well here. Significantly, though, I would expect between these two, Kevin is probably the faster runner on the slightly smoother trail. So you oh. can see he's struggling on this, this terrain. But when they hit the road, it will be an opportunity for him to fight back. So Sylvain needs to make, make hay while the sun is shining because he won't have this trail for much longer. They're, they're, they're near the end of the race. And so he needs to get more of a gap or there's a chance oh. that, that Kevin will fight back. But um, you can see him just streaking away now. Um, what This is the battle we were hoping for. Someone coming from far behind. You um, can just see the legs, though, going to jelly, can't you? Like, it really does look like any moment he could just fall over there. But it's just 1.1 kilometers to go for these runners. Can he hang on? What, what shoes are he wearing? Is, is he wearing? He's, he's really struggling with this, isn't he? You can see... His, his knees are buckling at, at certain points in this trail. I, I don't know how he's, but now, there you go. Look, did you see oh the change? Oh my goodness, Now look at he's that. ready to run and he'll know the finish is close. So, so this is gonna be a, a massive battle right until the end of the line. He's never podiumed in a race of this level before. We, we did, I did some research on him last night. There aren't many times about him on the internet because even though he's trained with Patrick in Kenya, he's yet to really emerge into the world stage. And, and this is, this would be a great, a great podium for him to catch if he can get Sylvan back in his sights. Well, I mean, it's just a surprise not to see Remy Bonnet and, and just a bit of a shame for the Swiss crowd who'd love to have seen the, the national boy do it for them. But, you know, that's racing for you, isn't it? That's trail running yeah. and that's what happens in the Golden Trail World Series. And Remy knew he was going to have to commit early, which we believe he did, but, but in similar, similar times 
last year and the year before he committed early and it, 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 it blew up in his face and he finished in 8th and 12th and just listen to that crowd egging them on there really is nothing between them what we're talking like one metre there this is, I mean this is the sprint finish um, in, in the making we, we saw the tunnel previously we knew how close him, that was to the finish and, oh wow I mean that's that's going to be heartbreaking on that hill. Here comes the tunnel, and we know from here they very quickly emerge from the trails and they're back into the crowds, onto the road, and into the finish. They'll be coming up to around 600 meters left now. Um, the, the, the change of body language there suggests that I don't know if Sylvain's got the, the flat out pace to be able to, to pull Kevin back now. Um, no, it does look like. It's like Kevin Kibbert is going to make it a, a one, two, three, perhaps. And he? the fact that Sylvan looked at his watch, he's clearly trying to figure out how much, how much is left of the course. He knows this course, he should know, but he's being gapped now. This would be a one, two, three for Kenya, which would be an incredible domination, given that they've, they've never even won here before in the men's category. An unbelievable turnaround. And yeah, I mean, look at that stride. If I was this coach, I'd be watching this back and, and trying to figure out how we can get this pace on those downhills because... Yeah, he didn't look comfortable and I, I thought it was all over then, but he's, gosh, just as soon as it gets to some flat, some some kind of, you know, tarmac, some some non-trail, he but is Sylvan's all over responding. it. it Sylvan looks like he's, he's up the pace a little oh, bit. Please, please, please get out of the way, brothers. Um, he'll know the finish now, so he'll know when to do his sprint finish. If he's tactical, he'll just try and sneak up on him without him realising. This is where the noise can count against you because the noise of the crowd <laughs> stops you hearing the, the, the footsteps of the person behind you. I've never seen either of these runners in a sprint finish, although it looks like, oh, wow, this is, this is close enough if Sylvain can push now, but it, oh, he keeps on looking at his watch. What's he doing? Well, I, I, I think Kevin Kibber is going to come home to make it a one, two, three for Kenya, isn't he? Yeah, a, a fantastic performance from a fairly unknown runner before today. They'll be in the golden trail from now on. We'll, we'll, we'll hopefully get Kevin traveling to America next, but he's, uh, I mean... He knows Patrick, a school friend at the finish. You'll see his response when they see each other because he was a threat in, in, the, in Patrick's mind from the start. But um, what a great performance to, to, to arrive on the world scene in third place. And, you know, 2.34 is still a great time. So Sylvan looks absolutely spent crossing that line. Yeah, Sylvia and Kasha coming in fourth. That are very close. I mean, one, two, three, and for all under two hours, 35 minutes, which for this course is pretty exceptional, isn't it, David? Yeah, I mean, they, and, and now onto the women's and the battle for finish, for, the, for first is happening. Fourth place coming in here. This looks like Ooh, we, we, which run are we expecting here? Uh, maybe fi oh, sorry, fifth place coming. But the battle for the women's. Let's hope the cameramen can please stay on the women's battle. Um, Sophia, uh, the last time we had a split was only 44 seconds ahead of Joyce, and we know Joyce is a very good descender. Yeah, and there's only just over four kilometres to go, so we haven't got. You know, we've only got maybe about 10 you know, uh, like 10 to 15 minutes or so of this left, and it's going to be exceptional. Now, there, there still is some climbing to go. They've got about 5K left, and so we, we're expecting them to, to, to come through Nava, and that's where the, the downhill really starts, and that's where the pain kicks in. This looks like Eli, Eli Hebbing from the back, of, uh, which is a great performance for him. He, um, he did very well coming second in Mont Blanc. Sophia is looking very strong still, though. She's looking very fluid. And we saw towards the, the end of Mont Blanc, she was starting to st suffer on the downhills. The mm. fact that she's run that distance already, hopefully, will mean that her legs have had that pounding to recover from. So she should be, and here are our highlights. What, what a victory for uh, Philemon Ombogo. He came in here favourite for probably top three, not necessary for the win, but um, what a performance from him. Yeah, you could just see the smile on his face and that he enjoyed that one. And to be honest, he looked pretty comfortable all the way through. And the same goes for Sophia now. And yeah, we're in it. We will be down in the town. Uh, and it's going to be a really exciting finish. But just we just would love to know how far behind. Yeah, 
we, yeah. we're going to hopefully bring you the splits of the ladies behind um, quite soon because we expect Joyce will be within almost eyesight, especially some of these sections here. As you can see, there are some long curves where you get an opportunity to see where especially when you cut back on yourself where the opposition is and that really gives you the uh, gives you strength when you know they're within uh, within range mm. um the noise of the crowds can sometimes help because you can listen out to hear where they are um but sophia she's used to leading a race like this now which will give her strength and, and there's joyce now and she looks pretty comfortable as well doesn't she she does but i'd, I'd suggest given it's a downhill she's not flowing at the speed i'd expect to see her um, I think Sophia was looking faster over this type of terrain. She, um, she looks like she's still moving, but, but with less purpose. And um, yeah, I mean, I mean this, the cutting back to Sophia on that slight uphill, she's mm. still pedal, uh, pedal to the metal. And, um, <laughs> she's about one minute 50 ahead as well, which is yeah. pretty significant, isn't it? With, uh, with probably less than four kilometers to go. Oh, do, uh, yeah. Sophia's got less than four kilometers to go now. And, and we, we've been talking about the fact Joyce is a good descender, but the trouble with a downhill, if, you, if you're if you burnt out before the downhill, even if you're a good downhiller, you need to have that um, enough in your tank to be able to attack it. Because if you don't attack, you have to sit back. And as you could see from the, from the, the, the difference between Patrick and Philemon, Leaning in and attacking allows you to use gravity and actually accelerate down the hill. As soon as you have to step back, all of the force goes through your legs. It's so much more painful and they act as brakes. And so she's looking, she's looking fairly fluid, but just not, not with the same kind of pace or intent that Sophia has. What was her expectations coming into this race, do you think, David? Well, the, the, one of the issues with, um, with a lot of the mountain runners like, like Joyce is that they don't often get the opportunity to take on the trail runners. And so they'll run a, a lot of, of, of mountain running races across Europe where um, Joyce has, has recently set an incredible time, as we mentioned, in Theon Dixon. She's been relatively unchallenged through the series other than Philaris, but she knows she can beat Philaris in a race like this. So it's very hard to come into a race where you're, you're used to winning and know how to actually adapt to the runners behind you and how to pace it, particularly when it's a longer race that's outside your comfort zone. So mm. I, I think at this stage, Joyce has probably given up on first because she'd have seen the distances getting greater and greater. And uh, to have dropped a minute in the last 5K, it's not a ma massive amount of time, but you, you, th there is a chance, though, that, that Joyce is being tactical and trying to save herself for those downhills. Because if you imagine a downhill, it is almost a magnification where if you're good, you can times your, you can increase your, your, your mm -hmm. speed by like 20%, um, 30% increase. And so maybe she's holding back, thinking about being able to properly attack the downhills but given the fact that she typically runs less than 31 kilometers, more in the kind of 20 kilometer um, yeah, this region. Yeah, will be hurting for Joyce now, won't it, probably? Whereas Sophia, I mean, I know she's not a, a long, more marathon distance runner, really, but she looked like she was enjoying that at this point. Do you think she is enjoying it at this point? Do you think she knows how far ahead she is? She's such a competitor. I mean, before, and, and this is a telltale sign, Joyce has put her arms on her, her mm. hips. It often is a move when you're trying to get more oxygen, when you have a stitch. Um, but Sophia has been competing from a young age in, in Schemo. She's an Olympian. She's won some, uh, some, some World Cups um, in Schemo, and, uh, sorry, in, in, um, in, in skiing. And so she, when, you, when you're winning and you start to have that pain, it almost becomes a pleasure because it's 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 reinforcing how fast you're running. It's something that you you're battling with, trying to um, just stay on the edge of what's possible. Um, she will have had some spies in in Hotel Weisshorn who would have told her the the, the difference in in paces and the difference in times. That would have been about 10 minutes ago, though. Okay. Um, and actually, probably a bit more than that. Um, and so she will be running fairly blind at this stage, unaware of where she is. But, but we've just had an update on third place. You can see that these two are, are, are racing each other hard because Fillerese now is seven minutes behind Sophia. A massive gap. So it just shows what it does to your, to your performance, knowing that you're still in the running. 
fourth place behind them has just come through is uh, Madalena Floria from um, Romania, from Romania. Yeah. and she, gosh, didn't she start us off well? I really would love to see her hang on to get a top five, wouldn't you? And then maybe she'll come out to America as well for the next round of the Golden Trail World Series. And, and the fact that, that her and Fillory seem to be at a fairly relative um, similar pace suggests that our top two runners are, are just up to the level and actually that, that, that they're holding on their positions well because to have dropped seven and, and we're going to have an interview now with our winner uh, martin is interviewing philemon let's let's hear what they have to say always one race because your colleague patrick Kippen was leading for a long time until you came back so philemon tell us how this race unfolded for you Teamwork, me and the pad because we come from land together. We lead Chardon, Chardon, the midpoint. Merci. So it was me, we are able to proceed. So he gave me that chance. No, now I become confident and I win the race. That is beautiful. It is not often that we see a team race in trail running, but Patrick Impingeno is the world champion in vertical. We know for the first part of the race he would be the strongest and he took you took you with him. And then in the longer part, you're the second in the world championship in the classic. So we knew you were stronger in the descent. And when you caught up to him, he gave you a little sign. He's like, yeah, you can go. Now is your time. So how was it after that? Now when it, it told me just the past, he gave me confidence that you are capable to go because Downhill, Fatico uh, uh, is strong, but downhill is not strong. He gave me the opportunity to go. Now I feel confidence. I push up to the end. Perfect. 21 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, Philemon Obongo, congratulations for this incredible win. And it really was an incredible win. I mean, if we look back at this race today, you've got to think that by staying with, with Patrick on that first steep climb and Patrick knowing he then had to try and push hard from, uh, from Ponchette to Chandelin, I, I think that's where he won it. I think he just forced Patrick to to burn his matches early. Ooh, and, oh, there was a, oof, just wow. a runner in front of Sophia there. Gosh, that, I mean, that just shows how, how, how dangerous and how fast these, these runners go. But David, you're very au fait with, with all Golden Trail World Series things. And I would love to know from you, how does this race differ from, you know, the Dolomith run that we that was just recently last month and the ones coming up in America? I mean, the if you look at how fluid this is right now, um, this has so many miles of, of what we call fast running. They're still hard, they're still climbing, but Sierra Zanel has just such lovely smooth trails. Um, and actually, we, we're having some updates on this is quite a turnaround for uh, Yao Miao from China. She's up to sixth place, 25 seconds behind Nienka Blitman. Last time we, we had an update, Miao, uh, Yao Miao was in 10th position, and we know that she's had got a very Ladies fast and marathon we are time. The second so uh, look, place we're going to be going to Patrick Kibijino, second finish line. place in the race the today to see what his thoughts on today's race are. In vertical running. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Kibijino. Patrick, congratulations. You were leading for a long time, but then your colleague uh, Philemon came back and took the first place, but you, you told him to go. So was it a race strategy to help each other? Yeah, of course, uh, first of all, I want to thank the race organizers. Secondly, I want to thank uh, my manager. And thirdly, I want to thank the fans who are cheering us. I congratulate my colleague uh, Philemon Griago for winning this race. It is uh, the best race for him because uh, he is a silver medalist for up and down running. Yeah. yeah. So it was the it was the best race for Philemon. And for you, last year you were in second place. This year you are in second place. Which one feels the best for you? Uh, I think today the race was the best for me because uh, my colleague Philemon won the race. Yeah. Great team effort. Ladies and gentlemen, second place, Patrick Kipingenu. Thank you very much.
I mean, that's lovely to hear, isn't it? That, you know, for him, this was the race. This one was nicer because his, yeah. his compatriot got to win his teammate. to see it. Like, you, they've, they've been training in Austria together. They're obviously such a team. And, and the, you know, absolute credit goes to their coach, hey? They've done an exceptional job with those runners. But Sophia here on the home straight, almost 1.5 kilometers to go. And, and this will be hurting now coming down. It's quite oh, steep. Oh, and, and you see she's having to break down and all that force is going through. But the it, it's looking like the real battle is for third place. It's still extremely tight between Philoise Kisang and uh, Madeleine Floria, who were both both leading at one point in the race. But also, fifth and sixth is going to be extremely close as well between Yao Miao and Nienke Brinkman. We know that Miao Miao has a, a, a fast marathon time, but not compared to Nienke Brinkman. Neither of those are actually known for their downhill um, technical abilities, though. But uh, Yao Miao has had more experience in trail. She's uh, she's done well at, at uh, OCC in the past, but uh, but but they're within about 25 seconds of each other. But we're back with second. This is Joyce Nigiri now, who is um, she's looking comfortable. She's she she probably knows she's got second under wraps. Yeah. She does look quite, she looks quite smooth. Some other runners around her, but hands are on her hips. But you do yeah. think that there, uh, the last we heard, there was about a three minute gap between kind of fourth and fifth place. So about a four and a half minute gap between her and fifth place. And you just think that that probably won't get eaten up now. Yeah, I mean, she, I suspect she has a stitch the way she's running here. So this is going to be extremely painful. But the, the gaps in the field now, first and second look like they're, they're stamped on the uh, stamped on the paper there's a battle for third and fourth and then there's a battle for fifth and sixth which will hopefully we'll be able to get back and see those 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 bat those battles before the end of the show but you can see the fluidity here um it, it feels like joyce is holding back a little bit but they, they have their arms to the side to help with balance um they're still moving well um but sophia will be starting to hear the, the roar of the crowds. And, and one of the benefits of being at the female front end is that the men will have finished and so the crowds are already roaring and you can hear them from further away. And that gives you hope that the pain is gonna stop soon. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and what an advert for trail running this has been. It really is something exceptional. I mean, you can see just those views going down. I mean, I, if you're at home watching this, I'd be grabbing my trainers, thinking about what routes I can go on, hey? I mean, and, and David, from your point of view, like, what are the tips for getting into trail running? I, I think the main thing is, is just, to, just to, to, to wear any pair of trainers and just get out there. Because when we talk about technical terrain, most trail is, is quite easy to run on. And, and the best run is the, is the first one you do. So um, just, and, but trail's so different. And you can see here, some of this is, it just means it's not on road. Yeah. And, you know, I'm from London where we don't have many mountains. And so, uh, but I, I can still go trail running by, by finding my little oasis near me. And yeah. so just, just get out there, start practicing, but sign up for a race because there's nothing like the fear of a race coming up to actually spur you to start training. But, but look at Joyce here now. You can tell she's Ooh. in pain, right? She's looking behind. Yeah. She, she, she's clearly aware that uh, her pace has dropped. Yeah, absolutely. And if I was in Sophia's head right now, I'd probably have a little smile thinking, this, this is fun, I'm going to try and enjoy this. Whereas Joyce is thinking, hang on, just hang on in there. In terms of our series, this is massive because when, when Sophia won in Mont Blanc, she, she dominated, but she knew that Ali McLaughlin was not there. She knew Ninkia was not there. This is a race that suits Ninkia Brinkman. She was expected to come in and smash the field. And Sophia has never looked like being caught by, by Nienke for a second. This is a, a dominant performance by her. And she knows she's going to America with, with confidence back in her, her, her front yard. And, and, and this could be, the, this could be the, the moment where Sophia gets the confidence. And at the end of the season, will this be the race we talk about where the, the changes happen from, the, from Nienke more of a road runner to Sophia, more of a skier, but um, it just shows you the fact that people from all sports can come into this and pick this up 
super quickly. 100%. I mean, are we, are we looking at the potential 2023 Golden Trail World Series champion, you know, in the form of Sophia Luckley? I mean, she just seems in such great form, such a great headspace. And also, there's no expectation on her. Do you know what I mean? Like, she's yeah. come into it, relax. And I just think that helps. Yesterday at the press conference, she just was like, it's a mystery to me. I don't know what's going to happen. Haven't been tested over these. Haven't competed against these girls. Here she is. No one really knew what they were going to get. And, and they've got something really special. But between you and me, her training's not been great. Oh, between me and you and everyone else. She's, she's had COVID. She's had issues with, with transferring. She's done been doing a lot of uh, roller skiing as a training and not been doing as much running as she'd hoped to in the, in this season and so she's not had the opportunity to actually um, weather her legs to trail running and, and maybe that extra rest has allowed her to be able to, to race this frequently and perform at this level. 100% with 0.1 kilometers to go often rest is key isn't it and often yeah. runners actually over train so, oh, and she's going to soak this up. Look at the crowds here in Zanal, Switzerland. But, oh, she just... I mean, she, she's, she's won before in Strander. She won in Mont Blanc, but this is by far the most significant win of her career. Not only in Sierras and now in the 50th year, but she has taken on her main opposition that she has never beaten. And she has trounced the field from start to finish. She led up the hill. We didn't expect her to be. She pushed her speed across the top. She came in here not knowing if she could run fast. But yes, she can run fast. Congratulations, Sophia Lockley, winner of Sierras and Now, leader of our series. And is this a future Golden Trail World Series winner? in the making. Woo, you saw her put her arm over her head, the smile on her face. God, I can't help but smile now either. You can see how much this means to her. I think she really wanted this one, you know, but she was a bit too scared to say so. Now look, I think that's a mix of relief, happiness, tiredness, and everything in between. She is loving it. She is such a smiley, happy person to be around as well. And gosh, I hope she enjoys this win. And she's not been great at altitude previously. She's moved to Bergen. She has uh, Scandinavian, she has Norwegian and American parents and she's really struggled with altitude in uh, in Dolomis run she was sick on the uphill and had to uh, had to figure out what to do with that she had a similar thing in Pikes Peak but clearly she's just gaining in confidence and learning how to how to master races at altitude like this but I don't think Joyce realizes she's got second yet. I think she's still running, scared of losing that position. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, she does just want, want to keep hold of it, but she has got a big gap um, in front of third, but she probably doesn't realize just how much. And let's see that replay, tongue oh, out, yes. smile, lifting that above her head and her trademark plaits in as well. Oh, Sophia Luckley, well done. And a pretty decent time too. We didn't really talk about it, but it wasn't bad, was it? I, I didn't even clock what time it was. <laughs> I was too excited by Sophia. But yeah, I mean, it's a great performance. If, if you think that Maud set the record in 2.49, prior to that, she took five or six minutes off the record previously. Because, um, I mean, I mean Maud, Maud changed the game. The, the, the record previously was 2.57. Oh, well, Sophia would have beaten that then, then. Yeah, so so, that's just how good it is. Yeah, an incredible performance. And, but, but with this race, we talk about the time, but actually your race, is, your race strategy does change based on who's around you. So we talk about wanting to get the, the, the time, but people try and blow up their opposition. And actually, you take a slow time in a win than a fast time in a second or third. But, um, but Joyce, Joyce came here last year as one of the favoured um, runners to take on Maud, and she, she just couldn't put it together. It was actually Fidelis who, uh, who came second that year. So for Joyce, this is a really good performance. When I spoke to her yesterday, she had this glee in her eye as if she knew she was ready for this. She's beaten Fidelis in the pre-season before this in the shorter distances, and she came out strong today. And, and yeah, she's got a fluidity back. This is this is this is going to do a, a world a world of, of change for her confidence, and we we believe we're getting her coming to America as well. Oh, and that would be brilliant to see. And oh, I hope she is enjoying this. She, she's such a beautiful runner, isn't she? She looks so smooth. I've I've really enjoyed watching her on this course, and she just looks like she takes it all in her stride. And she's super young as well. She's she's not a very experienced trail runner either. And, and this is the excitement of Sierras and now you get people who are coming into a, a slightly more technical trail and then they, they, they love it. They, they find the joy of it and they get exposure to Golden Trail 
and then they can suddenly build their confidence and take part in, in races like this. Villarice came to our finals last year and, and, and really had a tough time getting used to trail, but you, we, we're seeing on her downhill, she's far faster than she was previously. But second place for, uh, for our Kenyan runner and a fantastic performance. We weren't sure she was even going to be on the start line. Joyce Najiru coming in in a new team, the Milimanese runners. Fantastic performance for her. She's, uh, she's going to enjoy these last few seconds, isn't she? Absolutely. And why wouldn't you? The crowds in Zanal here have not disappointed. They've come out in full force, ringing those bells to absolutely bring these athletes home. And you can see a bit of a smile on her face, a bit of relief too. But she crosses that line and she should be proud of that one. Yeah, and, and she'll, she'll be waiting for her former teammate coming past shortly. And you love to see it. Just look how happy she is. Oh, gosh. I just uh, seeing the smiles on these faces. They train for this. They hope for this. But, you know, oh, just look how soaking and, up this moment. And, and then here comes Fillerice. And actually, this, I mean, Fillerice is looking great coming down here. She's she, got uh, such a different running style, though, hasn't she, to Joyce? I mean, she does look like she might trip over. Yeah, and, and actually, like her, her running style with her, her her wider arms in some ways can suit the downhill because it it, it gives you a uh, a more balance to uh, to to adjust if you start to slip um one of the issues is it's quite hard to overtake people though with her running style because it's just a wider <laughs> running style but then if you're on single track no one can get around you it's, it's as if it's like you're running with poles so strategically it can be quite good to get out fast like she did today but it was looking like she wasn't going to hold on at one point. We thought we thought maybe she'd drop and, and, and fall out of the top three places. Yeah, I've absolutely loved this women's race today. I mean, it's been so interesting, hasn't it? And I also love the, all the different nationalities that are represented across Golden Trail Series. It's over 38 different nationalities. And it just goes to show that you, you, can, run, you can run trail in any country. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so we've already taken... Um, on, in Spain, in the Basque region, in the Basque country. We've, uh, we've been to the Dolomites in Italy. This is in Switzerland. Next, we're heading to America, where we have two races within uh, two weekends of each other. It's a Pikes Peak, 2,000 meters of climbing. A fantastic race last year. Then we go to um, Mammoth Lakes in California. We've never raced there before. So for a lot of these runners, it's going to be um, a new trail. And that, that means that they're not going to be able to uh, attack with the confidence because they, they, don't, they won't know how to pace the trail. And we hope to see some more American runners uh, making an appearance as well. People like uh, Grayson Murphy. And, uh, and, and that's why we love the Golden Trail because runners can just appear. You do well here and suddenly you're an international star and you find your sponsors, you get your funding, and you, like Nienka Brinkman, you arrive an unknown, you end an international superstar who suddenly has a career as a trail runner. Absolutely, and well, you know what I love about these length races? This one's been 31 kilometers. You know, the majority of the action has happened within two hours, but there's been so much drama in it. Mm. There's been so much variety of the trails. We've had up, down, we've had flat, we've had rolling, we've had descent, and we've had changeovers. You know, people haven't led for the whole time, and it's just been so enjoyable. And just more and more of these races to, to get people involved in trail running, to get people watching, it's just exceptional. And there's some amazing performances behind it. And at the moment, we've got a battle between Ninka Brinkman and Yao Miao. Alice Gadji from Italy. She's a former uh, mountain running champion, trail running champion, back in 2013. A great performance in seventh at the moment. Um, Emma Pooley from the UK. Um, she's, she's in ninth. Ali Mack in, 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 sorry, in eighth. Ali Mack in ninth. And tenth, Lucy Marigi, former winner here. She's won here three times. She's currently in the top ten. Fantastic to see, but Fillory, she came second last year with a great performance. It was looking like she was slowing too much and might be out of the podium places, but look at that battle. This is a hard one podium for her. Absolutely. She didn't look quite as smooth as Joyce came over that, did she? But she'll be, she'll be pretty pleased with that, David. I think so. I mean, as, she, she wanted to win here. I think she knew there were other people who could challenge and incredible strength to hold on like she has. Well yeah. done, Philarese. And I think we're going to go to some interviews, hopefully with Sophia. 
We're hoping to be chatting to Sophia shortly, the winner. But, but look at the, I mean, given that this is the finishing straight, it just shows how much pain she's in. And um, we, we saw that in the finals. It was five races back to back and Phila Reese was breaking herself every day. She's just an incredible athlete, incredible mental strength. But hopefully Sophia is now coming up to tell us how her race was. It looked like an absolutely perfectly executed race, and yet this is your first participation. Did the race unfold the way you wanted to? Did you stay in control the whole time? I, I did have a feeling that I was going to be a bit farther back on the uphill, and I was like, I knew a lot of those women were like powerhouses on super steep stuff, so I was just like, there's a really long race, and I want to be able to have really fresh legs for like two hours of running, and so I like. Pushed on the uphill, I did a lot of walking because for me that like part rate down and just like saves the legs and it was like just as fast. And like I definitely don't think I've ever had like a tactically perfect race as this one. And I like I don't have any intention, I was just like kinda like lagging the whole time. But I got to like the top of the really steep climb and I was like I wasn't like literally much I was just like gradually picking girls off. And yeah, I guess like it was just really it's awesome when you're in the next place. question. We this is the Ao Miao coming through for China. On a, on it looks the, like she's yeah, overtaken the Inky Brickman. Incredible oh, performance from her coming in for four. She's so good on that like ladder section. I, that is what shocked me the most because I was like, I honestly was like, okay, the steep stuff is really like similar to skiing. Like, I got stronger legs, like, the like power hiking is kind of my, my like go to. So I was like, okay, like, I had passed me on that, and I was like, I gotta get like a little bit of a gap. And she is just like badass on the flat, and so are like players and like all of them. And so I was like, I have no, like, I haven't run on flat at all this summer. And I guess. To be honest, it was very little flat. It was like, it's all like a little bit up, which is like perfect. And then the downhill was just like a perfect grade. And then the end, and that I was is like, Meow Yao coming right over the finish line to take fourth place from China. I'm sorry, Sophia, to talk over you, but wow, Meow Yao, what a return. Yes, incredible. We weren't sure whether she'd be faster than Nienke on that last downhill, but she clearly was. Thanks, Sophia. Like <laughs> Which was fine, because uh, then it finished. But yeah, honestly, I would, like wanted to do like Selly, but I was so afraid that someone was just going to pass me, so I really pushed to the end. I'm glad I did. But man, yeah, this is a proud race for the future. <laughs> I mean, that was incredible for me. She was in 10th at one point, and we knew she's got fast marathon pace, but to overtake Nienke, um, and, and this is part of the challenge, Nienke's a marathon champion, trying to get your legs ready for, for trail. We know she has had some slight injuries, but it looks like, wow, Nienke's dropped uh, another place. Um, this is really surprising. Is this Alice Gadji coming through, potentially? It um, could be, and we also need to find out where the Romanian runner, Monica Madalina Floria, who was leading for so much of the race. Um, where is she? Is she still in the top 10? I hope so. Yeah, I mean, she's, she, those downhills must be hurting tremendously, but um, wow, this is, um, Nienkes clearly not had the race she was expecting, but Alice Gatti from Italy, she was world mountain running champion in, um, back in 2013, just shows you that, um, you know, you, you can be running for years but fantastic performance for her. And 3.05 is a really good time still. And just behind her, Nienke Brinkman, who, um, I mean, she's going to be disappointed that with that result. Um, it, it's, it's hard. It's, it's a hard balance trying to come into a season this late without doing trail. And um, the, the question now is, can she, she, she hopes to come out to America and run Pikes Peak, uh, which she won last year, and to take on Mammoth Lakes. But will she be able to uh, pick yeah. things up? But we, we're gonna. You can, you can see she's get, taking on a lot of liquid, and and she she struggled coming over that line. And we even saw, you know, on the uphill, it wasn't her race today. And we hope she recovers well there. But we're gonna hear from our second place runner shortly. Hey.
Chris Engier from uh, the second place here at the CRC Nad, uh, 50th edition. You had a very smart race. This is not your first experience at CRC Nad, and you came back very, very strong. How was your strategy this morning? First, I would like to say thank you to God for the strength and uh, for finishing uh, at the beginning or in the course of the year. I was told to come. I will come here in Sierra Sinal, and it was my second time to attempt the race. And last year was not that uh, really good for me. I was not uh, mentally prepared. So I said I will come back uh, well prepared, mentally, emotionally, physically, and. Uh, in the morning, I said, okay, Joyce, you have to raise your own race, not to push, and then you are kaboot and finished. And so from that, I have achieved position two. I can't imagine. I'm really so happy, and uh, all I can say, I'm more than happy. And uh, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> so second participation, second place, massive improvement indeed from last year. What is the one thing you've learned, so you said you were going to do your own race, is there anything you learned and you applied today that allowed you to perform so well? Uh, from last year, I can say, uh, I think for everything you have to do, you have, be, you have to be mentally prepared. If uh, the mental is uh, destroyed, then everything is destroyed. And uh, this, this year, I was uh, mentally prepared, well strong, and I could say, yes, you must finish to push and be finished and uh, I think from uh, running the World Cup races I've been here from July, July yeah? and from this they have really made me to be strong in mind and uh, to prepare well for Sinan. Yeah. Perfect. It, well, it worked very well. So ladies and gentlemen, you need experience and you need to be mentally strong and then you can be like Joyce and finish in second place. Congratulations and we hope to see you potentially next year or at least again uh, to potentially come and claim the win. Thank you very much and congratulations again, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you so much. Incredible performance for her. And, and just before we cut to that interview, it, it did look like Nienke was really struggling there. And um, and even and this is Emma Pooley coming in for 10th position battle with Lucy Murigi. Um, who's going to... Wow, Emma Pooley into the top 10. Fantastic performance. And we're going to have a little highlights package of what unfolded in this race. So as you can see here, we... Uh, in the men's race, we started with the battle we were expecting between Philemon in the center there, Remy on the right, and Patrick Kibangino. Um, but quite early on, we were surprised that uh, Philemon was actually leading out more than we were expecting. We knew there'd be some fast marathon runners, and so early on, Hendrik Pfeiffer, 210 marathon runner here, um, showing his speed. But um, very quickly, as the, as the, the climb started, Everyone fell back into the positions we'd expect. So Philemon leading out here. We thought Patrick would be at the front. He is the world vertical kilometre champion, which means he's the, the best climber over short distances. And then there was a group of chasers, our classic trail runners there. Um, at this stage, you could see that they were, they were still trying to decide who should lead out. And, and, I, and this is where Patrick decided if he was going to make a move, he needed to do it now. They train together. Philemon is known to be a faster descender, faster on the flat. And so Patrick decided to attack. And you can see he, he built up a bit of a lead. It was never too much, only around 30 seconds ahead of Philemon and Remy. But as soon as they got clear into the, the, the open air, that's where their speed really kicked in. And Remy started to struggle. We knew he'd been training for, um, for, for 10Ks and he was a lot faster this year, but he seemed to blow up um, whether the weight of expectation or just the pace of the Kenyans. And so Patrick was still leading. You can see he's got a, a slightly injured leg there. He was looking strong though still at this point, but looking backwards, even this early in the race, because he knew Philemon had the, the faster pace over these types of trails. He, he, we'd, we'd been told in advance that Patrick was going to need a two-minute lead before the descent to stand a chance of winning. And so he was trying to build that up. But that was clearly pushing him into a pace that he maybe shouldn't have ran. 
Philemon now taking on water. The heat was going to be a factor today. 27 degrees outside. There's no shade from a third of the race in. And as you can see now, Patrick was starting to tire somewhat while Philemon was gaining strength. They train together. They know each other well. Patrick has always been the leader in this pack run together, their team. But Philemon beat him in the World Championships, which is the first time he's gained confidence to actually attack him. In third place, though, was a runner we, we didn't even know was on the start list. Uh, Kevin uh, Kaviri, um, who used to live with Patrick and they used to train together. This is the moment you see the changing of the guard. I'd love to know if anything was said between them there. But Philemon just didn't look like tiring from this point onwards. He pushed the pace. Last year, at a similar place to now, he actually fell and his, uh, he had to reduce his pace significantly. But it didn't look like happening today. He just got quicker and quicker and quicker. We'd never had a Kenyan winner in the men's field at Sierras an hour before. Now we have two of them leading out, but you can see the differences in, in running style there. Philemon flowing through, knowing he had the win in his belt, and Patrick just trying to hold on. He's a, he came here before, he didn't get top three back then. This is a huge performance for him. He's been winning in the, the mountain running series so far this year, but this is the biggest race of his career. And he's gonna be joining us in America for the rest of the series. A fantastic time, 2.27, un, un, not under the course record, but the second fastest time we've ever had in, uh, in Sierras and now second or third with, uh, with Andre Bradis from last year. And in third place, a runner who hasn't really achieved much here before in the past. But this is our top five women, fantastic to see. The battle for third was on. Sylvain Cochard, European mountain winner last year, um, came back against Kevin on the down, but Kevin had that, that sheer pace to come in third and take a one, two, three for Kenya. An absolutely dominant performance by them. Let's see what that did to our, our top 10 men though, because we were very focused on our top three, so much is happening. We've already mentioned first, second and third. Tibay Baronian in fourth. Uh, this, this, I mean, we, we did not see these finishes. This, this doesn't seem to be the correct uh, finish. Um, and we're taking that with, a, with a, a pinch of salt, given we saw Sylvain finish in that. Here we go. Fourth place, Sylvain Cachard. Fifth place, Robert Dorenzi, building on his second in Dolomis. Robbie Simpson, fast finisher, fantastic. He's had four seconds before. Thibaut in seventh. Xavier Chevrier, he was in fourth at one point. Uh, Cesare Mastri, he's come third in the past. And third, were, uh, tenth place was Jose. It just goes to show how much the battles can change that we've had so many podium winners not even in the top five um fantastic race amongst the men now on to the women's also a fantastic race amongst them yeah i mean you can still see women finishing really strongly here and it's great to see now in our women's race we were coming into this with an expectation that it was going to be Ali McLaughlin against Bianca Brinkman and against Villaris Kisang on that first climb. But some of that story went to plan, but there were some big upsets from the start. Villaris has come second in the vertical kilometer in the World Championships recently, and uh, we knew she would be using that pace in the first third of the race. And she took out to the front, front very quickly. But you can see here in second place, from Romania, the surprise of the day, Madalena Floria was, um, she's done very well in shorter distances, but never something this long. But tracking back in third was Sophia Lockley, probably the unfavored athlete of, of, uh, of the two Americans because uh, she's, she's won Mont Blanc in the past, but she's not known as much for her climbing ability. But by the top of that peak, coming into Ponchette, Madalena took the lead. She was looking very comfortable and she was someone who's never performed at this level, um, at, at this level in the world stage. 
but Sophia was looking very, very smooth and showing her raw pace. Villarice was starting to struggle in the heat, as you can see here, and it very uh, quickly became clear that the battle would be whether they could hold on for Sophia in the chasing pack. As they came through Chandelin here, um, Villarice here took on her nutrition. She'd, have, she, she'd already lost her place to, uh, to Madalena, but Madalena also started to slow. As you can see, she was looking around here, she was having to have a drink, and Joyce de Jury, Favourite for last year's race, who we didn't know was going to be here. They used to be in a team together. She um, passed Villarice um, shortly after Chandelin. And then the battle for first truly began. They overtook Madalena with around 15k to go in the race. Then we had Joyce overtake her and they became almost neck and neck, 44 seconds between them at one point. We know that Joyce has run this course before. She's got a very good downhill finish. And so it was really looking like either of those two could take the win today. But Sophia building on her mountain um, of Mont Blanc marathon win, just never stopped like, uh, stopped pushing, never looked like slowing down. She's building in confidence, and actually at this stage, you could see the body language change slightly and Joyce start to slow. She started looking behind her to see who was coming, but actually these two ladies built a seven minute lead over third place. A tremendous performance. She's won here before last season at Strander. She's won Mont Blanc, but this is the biggest win of her career by far, and Joyce, Having started as one of the favorites last year and faded, she came under the radar with some very good times and second place we saw at the end, the joy in her face there. Fantastic performance for her. We hope to get her in the rest of the Golden Trail. Fila Reese was looking like she was potentially gonna drop out of the top three, but she came back and started battling all the way to the line. And you can see the pain on her face coming through, a tremendous performance to hold on for third place. And this will do a huge amount for her confidence. Let's look at our top 10. Thank you, David, for that fab race recap. Yeah, so at number one, USA, Sophia Lock Lockley. Uh, second, Joyce. Third was Phila Reese. And fourth, an exceptional run from Miao Yao. And in fifth, Al Alice Gaggi from Italy. And then we have got the Dutch lady, Nienka Brickman, in sixth. She'd be a bit disappointed with that, I imagine, but she did really look like she was struggling. But what a race Sierra Zanel has been. I've been Jess Rogers. This oh. has been David Hellard. We've absolutely loved it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Pikes Peak, 16th of September. It's going to be the race of the season.